Proud of our students, proud of our graduates. You're watching the Westminster Cable Network. time here at Bury Stadium. The lights are on as undefeated Case Western Reserve comes into town to take on 3-1 and one Westminster. Hello everyone. I'm Tyler Helvin. Alongside me for today's game is Scott Reniger. Scott, this is the game that everyone has their eyes on. Should be a shootout. Oh, absolutely. Um, Case Western undefeated last year. Beat the Titans pretty soundly up in Cleveland. Come in undefeated, of course, as you mentioned this year. Yes, Tyler, this is a big game. I wouldn't say the game, but then every game is the game as you approach it. Case Western coming off of a 63-20 to domination over Teal. Westminster took on Bethany last week, won 21-3. And, Scott, we actually called that game. We saw that in the first half, Westminster's offense played fantastic. In the second half, the only touchdown they actually scored was a pick six. They had no offensive touchdowns in the second half of the game. And against a team like Case Western, you got to get it going and you got to keep it stabilized through four quarters. It's a 60 minute ball game, Tyler. No question about it. It's a 60 minute contest and you have to play 60 minutes, being your offensive unit, your defensive unit, your special teams. It's an all-the-time team, all-the-time game. And unfortunately, you and I both noted in the second half last week, we stopped controlling the line of scrimmage offensively, and so we were not able to muster up. As, as well as we uh, are offensively, we weren't able to control things. And last game, Keanu Grice actually filled in for Bryce Hill, who got hurt in the first half of play, as well as Augustus Nicastro getting hurt and Shimon Walker coming in for the entire second half as well. Nicastro was hit in the back, believe he had a concussion, was not able to come back. But from what we've been told, Bryce Hill and Augustus Nicastro should be playing in this game, which is crucial for Westminster. Two of their, you know, best starters. Oh, absolutely. Running back. Absolutely, and the Castro being the starting quarterback from the get-go, and is our really our talented quarterback throwing the football and directing traffic out there. Um, Bryce Hill has lightning in his feet, wings on his heels, and he is so quick. It's just a joy to watch him read through a hole and move up and down the field. Last week, Bryce Hill rushed for a team-high 45 yards, which showed how much Bethany kind of stifled the run game. And in this game, Westminster, they're going to try to get the passing game going quite a bit. Case Western focuses heavily on the pass. In fact, their starting quarterback, a freshman, Drew Saxton, over two, the past two games, five touchdowns without even playing in the fourth quarter. And when you're playing like that, that's essentially Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs <laughs> in the NFL. Yes, I, I'm not sure he's quite up to that level yet, but, <laughs> but he certainly has been impressive to this date. No doubt about it. And, and he is what makes their machine run. And he has thrown 10 touchdowns compared to one interception. That's actually eighth in all of D3 football. Whenever you look at the running game, you have Sam Jenkins, 174 yards and two touchdowns. You know, they can get the running game going, too, if, if they want to. Well, and the running game dominates the clock, obviously, because that just keeps rolling right on through, cl keeps clicking off seconds, and that's so crucial. When I have the ball, you can't do anything, Tyler. So if I can play keep away, you know, that's that's huge. We'll be right back with more of our pre-game coverage. It's Case Western taking on Westminster here on your home of the time. See ya. 
I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. As we took a moment to honor America there, that was the national anthem performed by the Westminster Marching Band. Greg Debelak, head coach for Case Western Reserve, says that this he's actually very, very confident in this squad. And, I mean, who blames him? He is the most accomplished coach in Case Western Reserve football history. Our sideline reporter working tonight, Matty Keenan, has more. Thanks, Tyler. Yes, Coach Greg Debelak, he's been coach for Case Western Reserve since March of 2004. And like you said, he is definitely by far one of uh, co uh, Case Western's best uh, football coaches that they've ever had. Uh, he's all he's ranked his team in the top 25. He was 2017 PAC Coach of the Year. Um, and last November, when Case Western met up with uh, Westminster, while Case Western left victorious 41 to 10, it was a huge milestone for Case Western as it was their 100th win mark. So while both teams right now are both undefeated, um, it's definitely going to be a great night for football. Tyler. And again, this team has been undefeated for a very long time. Last year, they did not lose a game. They're just not accustomed to losing, essentially, at all, which is very interesting considering last time these two teams met, Rob Kuda was the quarterback. And as Debelak stated, actually, in a, in a statement to the press, he said that Rob Kuda was a do-it-all guy. He was the one that did absolutely everything, and replacing him would be very hard. But then, here's Drew Saxton, comes in, 10 touchdowns, one interception, and a high-powered offense. Well, I remember just uh, five years ago, Pauly Colombo came in here and took the controls of the Westminster Titans under the center. I shouldn't say under the center. He took a lot of snaps, direct snaps. But it's, it, it's a position where you have to take control. You have to control the confidence of your line. You have to control the confidence of your receivers, of the running backs. And apparently this young man has a lot of control ability. And of course, Case Western has a lot of receivers to go to. You have Colt Morgan, who has 17 receptions for 217 yards, six touchdowns. And this is only in three games. That's the sixth amongst all D3 wide receivers. Whenever you're producing stats like that, we have a quarterback and a wide receiver that can go hand in hand. That's essentially why they haven't lost a game. Oh, exactly. And the one thing I think our, our viewers may want to really concentrate on is how quick the snap comes back and they get rid of the ball. This is not a five or even a, a seven step drop uh, passing game. This is a quick two, three step, get rid of the ball, get it to your receivers with blockers in space. The same thing we saw last week very much with Bethany trying to get it to their tremendous running back. The same thing uh, prevails here. Get the ball to your receivers quick and let them run with the football. And if Westminster is going to prevail in this game, it's most likely going to have to come down to their defense. Last week against Bethany, they managed to pull off four interceptions. Paul Gonzalez leads the team with eight tackles. Bill Medea last week had seven tackles and an interception. Excuse me, Paul Gonzalez last week alone had eight tackles. Bryce Thomas had his first interception last week. Marvin Liberiste and Aaron Pierce both had interceptions last Last week and they tied the team high with two. Well, and I think interceptions may be a little more difficult tonight in as much as what I just mentioned, uh, Tyler. It's a quick passing game. Get it out to the flats. Get it out to the flats. Get it not long and that. And so we're going to have to read. Get back to your earlier statement. It's very cliche-ish, but you win with defense 
and you control the game with offense. You control the clock with your offense. As we said, when I have the ball, you can't score unless you make a defensive play. But control the clock, play keep away. Defensively, you've got to stop the other team. Three and out, make plays. And last week, actually, we talked about how Westminster's offense in the second half got stifled. No touchdowns, and again, except for the pick six in the second half. And this game, you know, going in, you got to wonder, you know, what's, what could have happened last week and what was going to happen here. Last week, the defense bailed out the offense. In fact, the score could have been 21-17. to uh, Two back-to-back -back drives for the Bison last week ended in interception. And whenever you're going down to score and you end up getting abruptly stopped with two interceptions on back-to-back -back drives, that is going to kill momentum entirely, and then it's impossible for you to score. Exactly, and, and as I said, not to be repetitive, Tyler, but control the game. And this is essentially what Westminster really needs to do tonight, control the game. Offensively, defensively, have a splendid kicking game and go from there. As we head down to the field now, we look at the captains for today as the coin toss is about to begin. You got Keanu Grice, Paul Gonzalez, actually two number ones there, both Keanu Grice and Miguel Luis, the free safety, as well as Brady Hugh, the defensive tackle. Toss is up. Westminster won the toss, and they're going to defer. I see Gonzalez wave his hands, so we're going to defer, which seems to be, we anticipated that last week, and it didn't happen. Uh, Bethany took the football, but so we'll have the choice of second half. As both teams shake hands, should be a fantastic game here in prime time at Bury Stadium. This is one that multiple radio stations, in fact, were promoting around Western Pennsylvania, saying if you have nothing else to do, there's no other D3 games happening right now. Tune in to Case Western and West or Case Western and Westminster. Uh, should be a fantastic one. I mean, and. Case Western undefeated. You know, Westminster have never beaten the Spartans in the three meetings that they have faced each other. Whenever you, last time you meet, you end up having a 41 to 10 loss. You come to this this game. Last time you're playing at Case Western, come home. You're all fired up. It's the only night game of the season for the Titans. I honestly think that Westminster has a big, big home field advantage. Well, it's it's always nice to play at home. It's very nice to play big games at home. Look at our stands. Look at the stands, Case Western fans across the field. You can't count them by hand, but there are not a lot of them over there. And um, it's just nice to play in front of your classmates, your friends, your professors, everybody on the Westminster family. So again, to reiterate, Westminster won the, the toss, chose to defer. So Westminster will be kicking off and will get the ball after halftime. We'll see what Drew Saxton and the Spartan offense can do on their first drive as we get set to kick off. And Westminster will be kicking to the north or away from the lake on Westminster's campus, Lake Britain. It's still um, a little bit of twilight left out there, Tyler. The candles are lit, as you've said earlier. And it's a beautiful night for football, really. It's just been a gorgeous day and, and just a beautiful night. Nate Stefanski and Chase White back to receive for Case Western. Dylan Kidder, who had the opening kickoff last week, set to kick for Westminster. Here we go. It's the start of the primetime game, Spartans and Titans. Fielded at about the four-yard line, heading up field. Nice coverage. Stopped at about the 19 to 20 yard line. And like you said, fantastic coverage and a way to get the Titans fired up before the offense and defense even take the field. I noticed uh, as we were running down the field, a couple, couple of our coverage people took a little sidestep and slipped right back into their lane, which is crucial. That was Tyler Green who made the tackle. 
Back up running back for the Titans. So now Saxton starting his drive at the 20 yard line in the shotgun. Three wide receivers to his right. Give. Here's a handoff to the left side. Jenkins goes nowhere. Actually, no, he pushes the pile, but the whistle blows the play dead. Yes, yes, it looks like it's going to be no gain. Should be second and 10. They'll be starting from the defense's left hash, which would be the sideline to the east. And that was a loss of one, second and 11. Almost the same exact formation as last time, putting Jenkins to the left now. Quick throw, incomplete pass, knocked away. Number that was seven, I Marvin believe. Liberiste who made the play. Had a game-ending touchback interception two weeks ago, and that's a that will bring up a third down, third and long. They're, they're featuring uh, three receivers to their right, trips to the right with a split end left, and just the five interior linemen. Westminster in its traditional 4-2 because we're moved out to a cover. Saxton, back to pass, scrambles, uh -oh. escapes, time to throw, goes deep, wide open, caught by Jenkins, and Jenkins is gone. We lost contain on the uh, on the rush. Lost contain, got a little too deep. He stepped up, he started out, stepped up, kept his composure, and rifled it long. And we had let, um, let the receiver loose a little too much. Jenkins has had three catches for 134 yards on the year. And right there, he adds to that total. And just like that, the Spartans are potentially going to take a 7-0 lead barring the extra point. And it's good. Good. So on three plays, all it takes is a botched play stepping up and with all the time to throw, defense loses contain and Westminster down 7-0 already here on the first drive of the game. Not, uh, not a good start, obviously, and I guess that's a very trite statement to make, Tyler. I apologize for that. But uh, we had done so well on, on two plays, but that's just how quick and lethal the Case Western offense is. You have to play your position all of the time, and you've got to keep your lanes covered, not over rush, not under rush, and um, you've got to hit, shed, move to the ball, create problems. Quarterback did a terrific job that time of stepping underneath the rush, pulled up, saw his receiver, saw the field, and it was an across the field throw, by the way, from the right to the left sideline, and we let down. Robertson Albrecht to kick off to the Titans. We'll see what Augustus Nicastro can do for the Titans, if they can have an answer. Fielded at about the nine yard line by Hill. Hill pushes the pile to the 29 yard line. Pretty good return, good kick. As you said, took it about the um, 10 yard line, a little inside, had, had a little bit of blocking, got the Titans out to the 29. And that's not bad field position. In fact, it's more towards the 30 than the 29. We'd like to point out the defensive end, Austin Chin's mother, uh, is here for the game. Austin Chin, again, the defensive end for Westminster. Mother flew up from Florida for this game. First game ever. She always watches on WCN here to support her son here today. Nicastro rolls left. Trying to find someone, gets He's Connor Cox, somebody. who stays in bounds. About a six, six and a half yard gain. Nobody Great awareness six. to the 35. Very good awareness. Kept his composure, although we've seen, we've seen Augustus do that in the past. Keeps his composure. Good protection that time. Came out of the pocket a little bit more to find people in the scramble than in the rush. And there was a flag on the play that will set Westminster back. We couldn't hear the call, but now they will be back at the 20 yard line. Repeat first down, first and 20. Must have been a hold or a chop block. I couldn't see the official. First 
Fake handoff, throw to Javon Hardy. Hardy can't get anywhere. Stopped at exactly the line. It'll be second and 20. Try to do the bubble screen that you always talk about. Yes, get the, get the ball to your receivers in space with area around to run. However, boy, the, um, the Case Western um, pursuit was very quick. Three wide receivers spaced out to the left. And as we look right here, it looks like Westminster lining up might have a mismatch. Nicastro throws. Got a good hunk. Got a good caught. hunk. Is that caught along the sidelines of Bryson? Yes. Paulinelli. Wow. Kept his feet in bounds. Thought that was incomplete. Case Western sideline immediately said it was not caught. Able to snag it. Oh, my. Actually, no. A flag on the play, holding. Holding. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Okay, so another holding penalty sets Westminster back even further. This is uh, the opposite of where you want to go. <laughs> Ball now at the 9-yard line. They have to get to their own 39 for a first down right now. Nicastro in the shotgun. Tries the hard count, doesn't get him to jump. Quick pass to Connor Cox. Cox with a solid gain to the 15. And nice little quick pass that time over the middle. Didn't fool Case West. Of course, they're, they're very loose. Look how deep their safeties are here. They're back on the 35, 36 yard line, the two safeties. And it's a third and 24, ball in the 15. Westminster operating from the right hash. Westminster right. It's Here's a, a handoff up the middle to Keanu Grice. Grice shifting his way to the 25 yard line. Nice rush, nice rush and gain gained some yardage for the punting game here. Uh, Westman, that was a very good call, I would say, simply because they were certainly deep looking for pass and everything. And we have an open receiver out here wide on the punt. That is an open receiver. That This could be a fake, and it's not. The punt is away. Goes out at the 44-yard line. And if they wouldn't try to pull a fake punt there, that would have been a wide open receiver for a touchdown, Scott. You but, saw that but, along the sideline. But we, they had good pressure on us too. They, they came from the opposite side and they did pick up our motion man. We brought the widest of those three receivers inside. But you know, to be, to be very uh, honest with you, Tyler, I'm not sure how good of a thrower our punter may or may not be. So now Drew Saxton comes back onto the field. Fake handoff, quick throw, overthrowing Jenkins to the right. And Once last again. drive, Jenkins had one reception for 81 yards. That was the touchdown. And uh, the Spartans trying to answer after Westminster couldn't have anything on their drive. Once again, three receivers to their right, split end to the left. And they try to throw the ball in using the two of the three wides. Now here's a little different look. They're, they're in an I formation. I think they're probably going to go into motion perhaps, but no, there's, they're going in. It's two, two in the backfield with the quarterback. Saxton, plenty of time, now trying to escape. Does escape, throws, overthrows right. his intended target. And that was Colt Morgan, who we talked about previously. 17 receptions this year, six touchdowns, which again is sixth amongst all D3 wide receivers. So Case Western, of course, has many targets to choose from. You know, it's a, it's a very spread offense. And they're, um, and if, if you noticed, there are absolutely no huddle. They're all on the line, all waiting, getting the call, from, not from the sideline necessarily, it's coming down from up top. Their spotters. 
Saxton in the shotgun, dropping back to pass. Again, plenty of time. time. Quick throw. Underneath. And a tackle made, and the ball is out, and it's recovered by Westminster. Wow, what a shift in momentum. Absolutely, now it's time to do something with the ball, though. Definitely a shift in momentum and definite uh, field advantage. Garrett Bishop, the middle linebacker, came out of the pile with the ball. I don't think anybody noticed that the ball was out until the sideline started jumping up and down. No, but their, um, their offensive line so far, Tyler, has done a very good job. They haven't had the ball a lot, but they've done a very good job of protecting the quarterback. That time he had time and he came in underneath and the receivers just keep moving. Westminster starting at the 45 yard line. Fake handoff, throw, deep shot to Javon Hardy and that's oh. gonna be pass interference. No, it's not. Wow. We, oui. we. Oui. The whole crowd on the Westminster side absolutely livid. Hardy got practically tackled before the ball was there and there was no call. You can hear the displeasure right now. And Benz is with, wow. the, is with one side judge also getting an explanation supposedly. Second crowd and 10. Still booing Nicastro in the shotgun. Here's a handoff to Bryce Hill who gets about a seven yard gain. Yes, nice hole, nice run. Nice hole, nice run. Bryce is coming out. Last week there was a controversial penalty again, or not penalty, rather a controversial call where uh, the Bethany quarterback was running with the ball, escaped the pocket, had the ball knocked out. It was a clear fumble, but was called an incomplete pass. So if the same thing is gonna happen today, Westminster has to play lights out. Third down, three yards to go. Nicastro, quick throw to the left. A catch Back. by Javon Hardy, no, and it's they're incomplete. waving it off. Couldn't keep his feet in. He got lifted in the air and pulled out of bounds. And Coach Benzel is very questionable. That's two calls. One call out of bounds, the other call no interference. And the crowd still booing. I don't blame them. <laughs> Excuse my Everyone biasness. yelling. Dawson Porter, the freshman, back to punt, had a great awareness play last week as he threw the ball away after it was punted over his head. Fielded at the 11-yard line, getting about actually nowhere stops for maybe even a loss on the return very good coverage again very good coverage again we had now that was a short punt that time we were only back about nine yards ty and so he's just um you know but we had them so spread out they couldn't load the uh, up front positions and that was sam jenkins on the return so after a questionable non-call that Javon Hardy wishes he could have got. That would have been a big play for Westminster. Results in Westminster punting on their drive, giving it back to Case Western. Last drive resulted in a fumble recovered by the Titans, but they couldn't do anything with it. Back to what they like. Three receivers to the right, split end to the left. It's a give. Delayed handoff and getting nowhere. Stopped at the line, Jenkins. Good defense that time. We, we have defensed the rush so far, and we're only uh, five minutes into the game and not that many attempts, but still, but just enough. They're running the ball just enough to force us to stay honest and not tee off on a big pass rush. So now second and 10. Saxton, three wide receivers to the left, immediately under pressure, escapes two players, and is going to run all the way to the 17-yard line. I don't think he has his first. I think he stepped out before that. It was hard to discern exactly where he went out, but they're going it to be third, third and short, third and three. First down marker at the 21-yard line. Here's a quick run by Jenkins, and he stopped short. Very heads up play by the Titan defensive line, especially in the linebackers, the inside people, because that was just a boom right now. No, nothing from the sideline, 
No waiting for the play to come in. Snap the ball, hand it off, and go. Very heads up by the defense that time, and it's a good thing because that could have exploded on us. Chase White set to kick. Bryson Polinelli, the ever dangerous wide receiver, back to receive. Fair. Calls for a fair catch, caught at the 45 yard line. That is where, where Westminster will start. Westminster College has announced several exciting planetarium shows for the fall 2018 season. There is something for everyone this season, and all shows are free and open to the public. The planetarium is located in Hoyt Science Center on the Westminster campus and reservations are necessary due to limited seating. For a complete listing of shows and to reserve your free seats, call 724-946-STAR. That's 724-946-STAR as the Titans will get another chance. See if they can match Case's seven points with a handoff up the middle to Hill, who keeps his balance for a nine yard gain. Boy, Bryce just slid right up underneath <laughs> underneath <laughs> the uh, the defenders and just kept his balance and, and nice nine yard gain. Look at this and quick. no huddled for Nicastro. Here's another handoff to Hill and that oh. doesn't get anywhere. In fact, that was a stop at the line. And it'll bring up third and one. Yes, yeah, very, very nice play uh, by number 50, I believe. This yeah. crowd fired up. I actually can't see a single seat in the stands. I was not expecting that. Usually people like to come to the one o'clock games, but there is not a single seat right now in this stadium. Shimon Walker is into the game. Shimon takes it up the middle for a first down. He's got but it. They got Just the spot. Above. Boy. Just but they past knocked the him marker. back, yes. They're moving the sticks. They're moving them. And you can see he had a bit of a Double take there, almost changed uh, direction and went to the right. Would have resulted in not having a first down. Tried to make a little too much of something, but just was able to get that something to move the chains. And now to Castro's back into the game. Shimon having done his duty very effectively. The Castro, three wide receivers to the left, none to the right. Here's a fake handoff, keeps it himself. I think that was botched. He all, he bobbled that handoff. Yes, exactly. That is a, the second, maybe third kind of high snap that um, Brady Hogue has um, tossed back to the quarterback, to Nicastro right now. Little, little high on the um, snaps, and that's really destroying the timing. And you may not think that's essential, but that the timing is set to just get the ball and hand it instead of having to go up and that hesitation. Luke Bennett now in the game. Substitution made, three wide receivers to the left. Pressure, Let's... quick throw, oh, and a oh. drop by Bryce Hill, wide open. Low throw, hit him in the kneecap. Yes, yes, the, the low throw, um, they ran a blitz that time and that's why Bryce was so wide open, but um, the Castro just couldn't quite get it up into his hands and Bryce was ready to take off, yeah, although those, he had coverage too. Those are plays that need to be made. He had a lot of field in front of him, one to two players back at the safety uh, position. Third and 13 now from the Case Western, 47. Ball's in the middle. Three wide receivers to the right again. Nicastro immediately rolling right. Takes a shot to Paulinelli overthrow. Overthrows him. Had his men beat, throw couldn't be made, and it's another punt for the Titans. And taking on a team like the Spartans, you need to make something out of your drives because the Spartans will make you pay. Defense keeping them in the game. Only down 7 nothing here with 6.58 left in the first quarter. And we're back at um, normal punt formation. Ooh, didn't get the snap. And yeah, offsides, but not snapped it in the current time and no fair catch as Bumble. the ball is loose but fielded at the 14 yard line recovered rather and an interesting decision to not call a fair catch I think that's why everyone stopped for a bit uh, with three men in his face no fair catch yes <laughs> The 39th annual Lawrence County Band Festival showcased nine of the county's finest marching bands in spectacular fashion at Newcastle's Taggart Stadium recently. If you missed it, you can still see the entire show 
every Wednesday through the end of November at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Westminster's WCN Network, Armstrong Cable Channels, 72 in New Wilmington, and 204 in Grove City, Comcast Cable Channel 183 in Newcastle. Watch any WCN program on demand anytime at our WCN Vimeo channel. Fake and handle. Saxton, back to pass, plenty of time. And now gets sacked, we kept it too in. long. And down at the nine yard line, defense breaks through for their first sack of the game. Very nice control on the outside. Both ends that time collapsed from the outside in and kept the quarterback inside of their rush. He tried to step up and duck, but then the inside filled the spot. Nice pass rush, loss of about five yards. So now back at their own nine, second and 14. Man in motion, Give. hand off to Jenkins. Jenkins pushes the pile for an extra four yards. And it's gonna be third and 10. Third and 10, it's gonna be interesting, of course, I think. Now number 90 wants out of the game, something something with his hat or... That is Joey Lane, Lane. the defensive tackle. And that's not somebody, but, but wisely, his equipment wasn't on quite correctly. Quarterback assessing the defensive look. Paul Gonzalez was threatening to blitz. You can see a lot of defenders coming in. Here's a blitz, quick throw, and a catch for a Slam. first down. Absolute slinger. Post, post pattern, short post pattern, came from the outside, slanted to the middle. And that was Colt <coughs> Morgan again. Saxton, no huddle, Give. hand off to Jenkins. Jenkins, one yard gain. Very good defense again. The Titans, uh, for the time, are, are thwarting the running game pretty effectively here. However, look how fast they're ready to go. We quick weren't no huddle, even around. Quick throw to the left, and, and there's the block out a low there. tackle, open field tackle made at the 33 yard line. Looks like someone's legs got taken out. Oh, they Thought definitely it would be a shot did. Block. Well, it's legal out that way by the wide receivers and that it didn't come from in behind. And But how quick they got that ball off, that quick count like that. Garrett Bishop coming off. And Nicholas Casadea. Third and in four. Game. Now they're switching their receivers over here. Interesting. Three to the right. They really like having that formation. Oh, they love that. Three to the right. They love that. Had it that. all game. Motion to the left. Jenkins in the backfield. Quick throw down the sideline. Catch made with yes. his helmet. A one-handed helmet catch. Number 86. And Coach Morgan. We do have a replay on that. Coach Benzel furious along the sideline. I think he thought that there was pass interference. And a quick handoff to Jenkins, who slips a little bit back to the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look back into that previous play. I believe he did. He made one hand on his helmet. Flashback to Super Bowl 42, David Tyree helmet catch. They're back up over the ball. Second and 11 ball at Westminster's 42 yard line as the crowd is now chanting defense. They are fired up. Quick handoff to Jenkins, tries to get outside and still manages to get a gain on the play to the 39 crowd not happy about that and Benzel still shouting. They keep <clears throat> they keep the pressure on for the whole time they have the ball. They're on the line of scrimmage and they can get up and get, get that snap very quickly. Very well tuned offense, obviously. And another third down. Nine. They are three for five right now on third down conversions. This would be punt after, if they don't get this, a quick throw and an open field tackle made at the... It will be interesting to see what happens here. 37 <laughs> yard line, fourth down. 
don't. And this soon they're could going be, to punt. This could be a fake punt. This is the man. The punter is the guy that is deep on kickoffs. He's a wide receiver. <laughs> Was just saying if they didn't get many yards, see if they would try a long field goal or a punt. No, they have three to the field and one split to the left. And it is going to be a punt that is off fielded at the no, it's not. Paulinelli fooled. The coverage team acted like he was going to catch the ball and move to the other side of the field to where the ball actually landed. It's a touchback. Very Great heads fool. up. Very heads up by Bryson Paulinelli and our special team coordinator as well. That was a wonderful job of, of exactly what you said, filling the coverage. They all followed Bryson and boom. And that was big because that would have been inside the 10 yard line. And the ball actually landed at the six. So if it was covered there, Westminster would have started way deeper. But now starting at the 20 after that very unique special teams play used a couple times in the past previous years amongst other teams. Here's a handoff and a lot of patience to the 27 yard line hill kind of just weaved his way waited for his blocks to come and picked up about now, six that was, yards that was keanu grice actually who just ran the ball he's in for bryce hill right now and i'm looking on the sidelines for hill i don't see him down here with our training staff or anything so i don't think there's any reason for alarm right now so grice in the backfield Man in motion on the tight end. Here's a handoff to Grice. Grice can't get anywhere. Case Western immediately knew what was happening. And that will be a loss of one and third down. Tried to slant off the left tackle and then break it wide. And the linebacker just slid right over with him and made the play right at the line of scrimmage. Third and four. Westminster so far one for four on third downs. Long four, it's more towards five. We have had some receivers open and Bryce Hill is back into the game. Now Keanu Grice still in, man in motion oh, yes, to the left. Bad. That's Connor Cox in the backfield, quick throw to Paulinelli who First makes down. the catch along the sideline. Clutch catch will move the chains. And that was, I can understand why you were fooled. Connor Cox, the wide receiver, very rarely in the backfield, was alongside DeCastro on the right. Nice change of positions. Now Westminster putting three wide receivers to the field and Empty two wide backfield receivers. trips to the right. Quick throw to Paulinelli, makes the catch as he is gang tackled at the 41 in a five yard game. <clears throat> Number 90 about knocked his own safety who had come up to fill about knocked his helmet off. Neither team using a huddle constantly. Westminster choosing to go from, well, the, the quarter's going to run out here. As that's it for the first quarter of play. Case Western up 7-0, but the Titans trying to answer on their end. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. Medium as we start the second quarter of play. I'm Tyler Helvin alongside me, Scott Renniger. The Spartans currently have a 7-0 lead over the Titans after a Sam Jenkins 81-yard touchdown reception. Westminster has the ball at the 40-yard line. A quick handoff to Keanu Grice, who weaves his way for a, about a two to three yard gain. Crowd thought that there was a face mask. He saw his neck get yanked, but I don't think that was actually a penalty. I think he was just really juking and jiving in there trying to um, trying to find some space. He, he did a heck of a job of running to make two yards, but that makes it a third and two, very makeable. Uh, Hardy is wide to the right to the field. Westminster in double slots. Ball at the 43 yard line, putting Cox in motion to the right. To trips. McCastro, plenty of time, throws. Paulinelli diving catch along the sideline. No, they're Incomplete. waving off, they're waving off. Incomplete, could not make it. And right here, what do you do? Oh, punt. <laughs> We're just into the second quarter. Definitely try to change his field position again. 
Paulinelli laid out on that. There was no way he could get his feet in bounds. He was halfway out of bounds by the time he landed. Great snap. Single rusher. Punt fielded at the 25, and the ball is loose and recovered immediately in a huge hit at the 20 yard line. Again, the return man for Case Western. That's Justin Fan has not called fair catches on the last two punt receptions, resulting in him getting drilled. Yes, and our gunner, the first man down the field, missed the tackle. It was a second quick second uh, cover there, and that our, our defender got his hands on the ball just as Fan was starting to take off to his right. And Case Western quickly coming back out with their offense. They've had a very fast pace this game so far. Westminster only holding them to seven, except for the long throw to Sam Jenkins, the 81-yard touchdown in the beginning of the game. That was three plays in. Here's a handoff up the middle. <clears throat> Interesting play. No way. They ran motion. Looked like they were coming to their standard. Three receivers to the right. He doubled back and then acted as a lead blocker. And that was Zach Hall. Backup running back for Case Western. In right now for Jenkins. I don't see Sam anywhere on the field. Very unusual given his dual threat of running and receiving. Second and ten. Westminster's defense moving around a uh, very long time here to snap the ball. Five seconds left on the clock. And Saxton, will he get the playoff? Yes. He does with one second left. Under pressure, now gets taken down at the line by two players. That was James Leon, the defensive end. That was a good solid rush by the uh, front four of Westminster. <clears throat> so now third and nine. We'll see if Case Western can convert another third down. Westminster with just three rushers this time. Everybody else in coverage. They are three for six so far on third down conversions. Empty backfield, stepping up in the pocket. Flag on the play, and incomplete. Is that going to be holding? I believe so. It came from the referee, and frequently that is holding, when, especially when they're moving. There is the hold. Now, Benz is holding declining offense, Number 79. Yes. You definitely declined decline decline here, especially Fourth earlier. Down. We want to kind of elaborate. The touchdown for the Spartans earlier, Saxton rolled right had no one, escaped the pocket, had all day to throw, and it resulted in Jenkins getting away from his man absolutely wide open. And again, that was the third play of the game. And with that in your memory, you certainly do not want to give the Spartans another chance as the kick is almost short. Bounces fielded at the 46-yard line by Case Western. That is where Westminster will start their next drive. Westminster College is calling you to join us for homecoming weekend, October 12th through the 14th. That was the October 12th. With the all-new homecoming hotspot, an exciting football game, reminiscent reunion offerings, and much more, the hotspot will feature the homecoming court and our Titan mascot, Westminster and Wilmington marching bands, a pregame pep rally with Coach Benzel, game tents, food trucks, and a Titan Radio live remote and trivia contest. Reserve your spot today. Visit www.westminster.com. Westminster.edu slash homecoming as Grice gets away a little bit, pushes the pile for a nine yard gain. And took the handoff from Shimon Walker. So Shimon in the game for Nagustis Nicastro, and usually you only see this if it's going to be a run up the middle at the five <laughs> yard line or if Nicastro's hurt, but he is still in the game. Well, we're going quick tempo, and Shimon is definitely a running threat. Trying to do the hard count, nothing happening, and an audible. Shimon keeping it himself, gets hit, stays on his feet for a gain up to the 42 and a first down. Moving the chains. And 
and I don't see <coughs> anything on the sideline that would cause me to think that there's anything wrong with Augustus Nicastro. It's just right now the offense is using a little different approach with Shaman's definite running of threat. Shimon in the shotgun. Fake play action, throws deep to Javon Hardy. Touchdown. Touchdown, tight ends. And Westminster is going to tie it up here in the second quarter on a long dime by Shimon Walker. Look at him run down the field right now. He is fired up. All the way down at the five, he is getting the crowd fired up. Unbelievable strike by him. What a wonderful throw. Led, led Javon just perfectly. Javon had a step, step and a half, and that's that pure speed he has. And who blames you for being fired up? Get the momentum back in the Titans' favor on a <coughs> long ball. Somebody ball. didn't get in, our corner on the extra point. I think we'll get the playoff without having to use a timeout. Snap, hold, kick is up. Good. And it's good. The Titans finally answer 7-7 with 11-11 left in the second quarter of play. An exhibition that features the works of the late Peggy Cox, professor of, professor of art at Westminster College, entitled Bot Botanical Threads, is on display in the college's Foster Art Gallery in Patterson Hall through October 14th. The exhibition is a celebration of the life and work of Cox, a dear faculty member and friend who sadly passed away this summer. The exhibition is free and open to the public, and the gallery is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Friday. And you talk about a shift in momentum right now. Unbelievable. Let's actually check how far that throw was. That was a 42 yard pass by Walker to Hardy. And what a wonderful throw. I can't say enough. We talk about Shaman's running ability and the threat he is there. What a wonderful pass that was. Kickoff fielded at the 11-yard line. Lanes, very good. And taken down to the 25-yard line. That is where the Spartans will take control on their drive. Javon has two receptions. One of them being the 42 yards. Another one, we actually can't see what the other one is. Averaging 21 yards per reception right now. Paulinelli, two receptions for 15 yards. He's been a target as well. Westminster's been trying to go to him. And now let's see what Case Western can do if they can answer with a drive of their own. You have threats like Colt Morgan out to the right. Quick throw, caught. And More weaving his way for about a six yard gain. <coughs> weaving is a very good term to ex describe that too, Tyler. That was just a fog. And they get they get that those two blockers out there because that's their standard three, and here they are. Three again. Fawn has 233 receiving yards. Here's a quick handoff going nowhere. That was to Jenkins and it'll bring up a quick third down. Momentum moving in the Titans favor. If they can get a stop right here, that would be huge. Very good play by Paul Gonzalez. Not surprisingly enough, but a very good play that time because they were starting. They go that quick. They are so adept at what they want to do. Now here they're getting the play call down from up top from their spotters. I'm guessing the offensive coordinator may be up high. Paul Gonzalez led the team last week with eight tackles against Bethany. Benzel on the sideline getting the crowd fired up. Saxton back to pass. Rush. He is going to be sacked, taken down, and it's the first three and out of the game for Westminster. John Fitzgerald, the defensive tackle, penetrating the offensive line. Big Fitz. Big play. Now, that's Aaron Pierce along the sideline starting to rile the crowd up. And it's fun. I, I've never seen Benzel do that to the crowd. He was throwing his hands up, telling them to get into it. You know that he is into it if he is doing that. <laughs> So 
Snaps good, punts away. Paulinelli fair. Paulinelli fair catch, bobbles the catch, fielded at the 41 yard line. And you can see him a little bit there. Second he caught, it almost made your heart stop as you saw the move ball move a little bit. So after a 42 yard reception, by Javon Hardy from Shimon Walker, who came into the game in place of Augustus Nicastro. Westminster will have another chance to see if they can take their first lead of the game with 9-11 left in the second quarter. And Shimon is back in the game right now. Javon Hardy is out of this play. Well, I think we've got illegal substitution. We do. And we're gonna be five yards, he'll be first and 15. And that's, that's the first real mistake we've made um, outside of that third play of the game, obviously. But, you know, not um, you can't just run somebody in there. You have to give the defense the opportunity to substitute also. Otherwise, it's that penalty. Walker in the shotgun tried the hard count, didn't work. Drops back to pass. Oh. Now going to scramble, gets some room. Oh, and slides, gets his head hit at the 44 yard line. That won't be a penalty. No. No, it was <clears throat> it was not a, a shot in there like such as would call be called. You pretty much guaranteed that'd be called in the NFL. <laughs> Even if it wasn't helmet to helmet, that little contact right there. Luckily, he was able to slide, was very smart. He had two players in front of him. Yes. Give yourself up there for a four to five yard gain. Actually, no, that was more than that, as it's now second and six. Got more than I originally thought. High snap. Walker taking it himself. Oh, gets ripped down at the 46. 96 makes that play. And that was Tyler Bushman, the defensive end. That's going to be a flag and potentially horse collar? I actually didn't think that Pace was a horse. No, it's Pace 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 defense. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, he just grabbed it so quick. And, and the, the way our runner went down. He thought he was taken down by his jersey. I think he was actually facing away from us in the booth, which is why we couldn't tell exactly what happened. Good call by the refs, moves the chains. Now the ball is at the 38-yard line. Westminster trying to have a strike. Look and at this Nicastro. formation. Four wide receivers lined up behind each other. Nicastro in the game. What kind of formation was that, Scott? <laughs> Quads <laughs> trying, to get, um, trying to get the football. To, and, and he threw it to Shimon. I'm not so sure that might not have been a projected pass coming like that. It, it didn't have an opportunity to materialize, but I'm not so sure that uh, Rich DeMeo didn't have a little trickery up his sleeve on that call because now Shimon is back into the ball game as the quarterback instead of as a flanker. First time I've ever seen wide receivers lined up in a straight line behind each other. Here's a handoff up the middle and a burst of speed. 32. Big gain of about 12 yards. That's the first carry of the day for Tyler Green. Spreading the running around a little bit. Different styles force that defense to maybe adjust and play just a little differently. Third and three, ball at the 31 yard line. You're just on the edge of John Syback's uh, kicking range. Hit three kicks last week, 37, 37, and 38. Blitz from the outside. Shimon keeps oh, they it were, himself. They does were all over that. not get the first down. Tried to push the pile. And now fourth down. Let's see if they'll from bring the out back. This would be that'd be that'd be 30. The, the ball would go to the 38. And then down. Now do we have a penalty? I no, think the offense no, are trying to figure no. out if they're gonna stay on the field. And are they? They are. The offense staying on the field for Westminster, trying to go for it on fourth and three at the 31 yard line. Connor Cox comes back into the game and Polinelli both back into the game, set out to the right. Shimon looking to the sideline. Is this potentially trying to draw the defense off sides? Timeout called Timeout. by Westminster. Possibly, possibly. 
Westminster College's offense, off, office, not offense, Office of Alumni Engagement invites alumni, students, and friends in the community to join them for Titan Talks, a unique opportunity to learn from Westminster scholars on how we can all live our lives with a mindful purpose. Each night of this free three-part series will feature two 30-minute talks and light snacks. Learn and develop your best self through research and wisdom-based education, and learn how our best selves impact community. For more information on Titan Talks, call 724-946-7373. That's 724-946-7373. And Scott, you played. What would you do? Uh, the 31-yard line, fourth and three against uh, Case Western's <coughs> defense. Tough, very tough call for uh, Ben's and the staff. Almost assuredly a, a punt, even a pooch punt. Uh, they're not going to. They may put their heels as the old style on the 10-yard line and not move backwards. Although teams are moving backwards a little more. How skilled our punter is, I really don't know. I can't comment as to whether he can force that in. So, you know, it's if if the ball goes to the end zone and comes out to the 20-yard line, you you gain 11 yards. You may as well take a shot here. And Castro is the quarterback. Fourth and three. Westminster going for their. First fourth down conversion of the game. Can they extend the drive? Back to pass. Blitz along the edge. Quick throw and a catch by Connor Cox. Moves the chains. What a strike across the middle. And boy, that pocket was collapsing pretty quickly that time. Terrific concentration by Nicastro to not look at the pressure coming. Find his receiver and... and Cox was not wide open. He got himself open, but he was not wide open. That was a pinpoint pass. Very nice route and run. Super play. Ball at the 19-yard line. We said coming into this game, Westminster, huge underdogs. If they can pull off a win here, you could call it a passing of the torch. Quick fade to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could have made that play inbounds. Anyway, um, just the way, it's, and it's hard to see down in that corner for us, but I'm not sure that uh, that ball, and it, was, it had to be, it was on the outside shoulder, what they call the back shoulder, the outside shoulder. Well thrown ball, we were either going to be able to make the play or get it Joey, knocked away. Wasn't going to be intercepted. Joey Joy, the intended target. Kevin Chrisis, the cornerback in coverage for Case Western. Second down, handoff up the middle to Tyler Green, who nice hard pushes run. his way forward for a gain up to the 11-yard line. And nice hard run, really hard run. Kept his momentum going. I'm not sure he didn't perhaps miss the hole just a little bit to the inside, but nevertheless, a very hard run. Gain of a good solid five yards. Crucial third and five with 5.13 left in the second quarter. This game is flying by right now. Ball unofficially the 12-yard line. Trying to go up 14-7. Nicastro, plenty of time. Quick throw, caught by Cox. Cox. And does he get the first down? He does oh, to yes. the four-yard line. Oh, yes. Now the Titans in four-down territory. Obviously, they've been there. And as much as we did go on that fourth and three. So on fourth and three, a strike to Connor Cox. And then a third down, now moving the chains again to Connor Cox. Using him a lot. And here's Walker back in the game for the Titans. Going to keep it himself. Inside. Tries to get into the uh. end zone. He's taken down at the three-yard line. Once he tried to slide to the outside, it closed up quickly. Keep those shoulders straight ahead, Shimon. Keep those shoulders going right towards that goal line because they're really pursuing down in there. So second and three, second and goal now. Ball at the three-yard line. Titans trying to get their first lead of the game. Shimon still in the game. Puts Cox in motion. No, that's the tight end in motion to the right. Draw up the middle. Tries to get in. I think he's going to be a little short, but it's going to be about the one-yard line. He stopped at the one-yard line somebody, in a third down. Somebody got just enough of his shirt to pull him down. 
because his shoulders were square and he was squirming to get into that end zone. Ball at the one yard line, crowd on their feet right now. Now look, Shaman is under the under center. center. Is this going to be a quarterback sneak? It is. It is. Peterson, touchdown Titans. They're not calling it yet. They're coming in. They're saying he's short. Now the delayed call, a there touchdown by the okay. White Hat. And Westminster takes their first lead of the game against the Spartans. What a long drive. Takes the clock all the way down to 326 for the Spartans to see if they can have an answer on their end. Something Matty might want to ask Coach Benzel before he heads in at halftime is what is his message going to be to his squad right now? Great comeback. Kick is good. Up. And it's good. So Westminster down 7 nothing, answered to make it 7-7, and with a quarterback sneak up the middle, it's now 14-7 Titans with 3.26 left in the second quarter of play. Did you know that Westminster College is one of the top national liberal arts colleges in the nation according to the U.S. News and World Report's best colleges rankings? The Wall Street Journal and Washington Monthly also list Westminster as one of the nation's best liberal arts colleges. Find out for yourself why Westminster is your best choice for college education. Visit www.westminster.edu today. And again with 326 left, Drew Saxton and the, and the Spartans gonna try to tie it up before halftime. They have all three timeouts left. No, they don't. They have two timeouts left. We took a timeout. The scoreboard's not letting us know anything. Kick is off and it goes out of bounds. Oh my goodness, and Case Western will start at, I believe, at the 40 yard line? 35, I think. 35 for college, and not what you want to do on the kickoff no. after a leading score. No, it certainly gives them great field position. We have illegal motion on Westminster, obviously declined. Well, of course, illegal procedure is to kick out of bounds. Call. So the Spartans take over at the 35 yard line, trying to answer after the Titans take their first lead of the game. Three down linemen for Westminster, three linebackers, five in the secondary. Saxton coming up for an audible, trying to get the call over at the sideline. And he's giving his receivers what's going on there. Back to pass under uh -oh. pressure, now going to escape. Slides at the 41 yard line. Now, Benz John, is screaming at his. Yeah, get John, back, get John back. Fitzgerald, the defensive tackle for Westminster, was throwing his hands up while the play was happening. He was yelling, I'm being held, I'm being held. No call, and it's second and four at the 41 yard line. 2.58 left. Potential two minute drill here for the Spartans. Can they tie it up? Three down lineman with the threat of a linebacker. Zach Hall yeah, back in the across. backfield. Saxton escapes pressure, rolls left, still looking, goes back inside, still gets a gain on the play, and first, first down. down. First down. He is slick. He is slick at evading the tackles. Westminster had him dead to rights, but Saxton makes him pay with his feet. Slippery and a first down. You can hear the crowd absolutely roaring right now. Pressure along the edge. Saxton hit as he throws, goes up, and oh a big boy. catch at the 25 and a flag, flag on the play. We'll see what it is. That was Justin Fan. Did he go up and get that? Holding on Westminster to be declined. They'll take the play. Holding defense number 22. Pa penalty is declined. Resolve the play. It's a catch. First down. Well, Case Western certainly showing they can answer. With 2.13 left in the second quarter. 
will Westminster get a chance to potentially ans answer barring a clutch turnover here? Now look at this, double twins this time instead of the standard three, but see the ball is in the middle of the field. Timeout called by Westminster. We've not seen that formation a whole lot, Tyler, and I think we wanted to take a look. And um, With two minutes left, we'll go to a quick break and come back for the rest of our action. With two minutes left, it's Westminster and Case Western here on your home of the Titans, WCM. Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. Welcome back to Bury Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin. Alongside me, Scott Renniger. The Spartans currently have the ball at the 25-yard line trying to answer. They're down 14-7 with two minutes left until halftime. Saxton, quick audible. Well, I think they rolled the play. Whatever he had called, I think they rolled it. Quick throw to the right. And this open field block. tackle missed, and that's right. going to result in a seven-yard gain. Two people missed the ankles there of Colt Morgan. There was a blocker coming in underneath, though. We threw to the widest receiver, but the blocker came from underneath and got enough of our defender to force a missed tackle. Eight yards, second and two. Ball at the 18-yard line. Can Westminster, Westminster's D come up with a stop? They had four interceptions last week against Bethany, one of them in the red zone. Saxton, back to pass. Quick throw. Catch made, staying in bounds. Incomplete, no. 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 Incomplete, I think he's somehow stepped out and he's down I think that is Colt Morgan who is down on the sideline and if he is hurt that is an astronomical blow for the Spartans well even if he's not significantly injured he would be out this next play and perhaps the next couple three while they're trying to get into the end zone here which definitely is is a big um, situation change he is six foot five, and that ball was nice and high, so he was going up, and our, our um, D-backs, our corners, and even our safeties are not very tall people, as normally they are not. That's just not a position where you have tall people, and he just goes up and grabs the ball, and, and um, I'm still awed by that one catch that fan made uh, going up to get it. you got to wonder right here. Uh, status of Morgan. That was a injury that I think occurred after he landed. You saw he stepped into the end zone and suddenly fell to the ground, now being able to walk off under his own power. Well, when he went up, Tyler, he took a significant hit from our defender, which was perfectly fine because he grabbed the ball. However, he came down out of bounds, which is perfectly fine, and consequently incomplete. It's third and two. Now they have two timeouts left, and... Now they have all three of theirs, I believe. Empty backfield for Saxton. Five wide receivers. Three left to the field, two to the right. Listen to this crowd right now. This is a very rare sight to have Westminster completely packed. Again, do not see a single seat here in the stands. Everyone, the coaches, now jumping up, up and down. Blitz. A blitz. Saxton, quick throw, yeah, wide yeah. open, touchdown. And the Spartans answer just like that with a minute and one second left on the clock. The defense came after him. We had a blitz, which no doubt put it to man coverage. And fans just got in underneath it. It was a type of a post pattern or crossing route. Robertson Albrecht to kick the extra points to tie the game 14-14. Titans are loaded to their right. And the kick is almost blocked, but it That's is good. good. Well, 
minute and eight seconds and that ball from snap to kick away. That's <laughs> at, at 1.8 seconds, oh seconds. It's virtually impossible to get in from that position to make the block. So after Westminster comes in on a blitz, it leaves their receiver wide open. And again, that was Justin Fan who made the catch and the reception for the touchdown. So 14-14 with a minute and one second left. Of course, if you're the Titans, you want to go down and try to answer. And if you do result in three points, you have John Syback, who made three last week. The only one that he missed was a block. So you have trust in your kicker. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I think a lot is going to hinge on the return. Um, if we would happen to be stuck deep, although Case Western, I believe, has three timeouts left. Uh, that, I, I haven't charted one. The scoreboard is totally wrong in that regard. And I don't think Benz is going to get too creative if we're in bad field position. Now... If we would get a good return, then we have one timeout left, Tyler, and that kind of changes the complexion. So it's going to depend on this. We can't get called for holding or that traditional push in the back, block in the back. It needs to be a clean return and significant. The kick is off. It's a boomer to the four-yard line fielded by Javon Hardy. Hardy with a burst of speed all the way to the 31. Now that's going to be interesting, 31-yard line. <clears throat> Only one timeout, though, going back to that. To that, we, we took a timeout when we were on offense going in for the leading score and then took a timeout as Case Western was threatening. A quick score update from around the league, the games that happened earlier. Grove City beat Carnegie Mellon, W and J just barely beat Bethany. Bethany almost pulling off the ups upset. They lost 27 to 20 to W and J. And Waynesburg pulling off the late victory to Teal 24 to 21. Shimon Walker is the quarterback. Walker tries to get along the edge, can't get anything for about a two yard gain. Two yard gain, gain and he went out of bounds which kills the clock, which is not necessarily what we want to do right now. With 49 seconds left, Walker remains our quarterback. Can the Titans come in clutch before halftime to extend their lead? Or will we go to halftime with the score being 14-14? Blitz along the edge. Oh, boy. Walker gets hit Got and taken down. Side. Number 44. Been waiting for him to make his presence known. And he made it known that time, came in from the left. And on third down, the clock's at 30 seconds right now. Will they let it run down? I think because of that sack, that is so much momentum lost on this drive, I can't picture them taking a big risk. They might let no. this go all the way down to zero. Well, there's about a two second discrepancy between the 25 and the play clock and they're gonna get a snap off with four seconds a desperation heave that is going to fall incomplete end of half end of half so at halftime the score all tied up on this prime time thriller 14 14 between westminster and case western reserve we'll be right back with first half stats and our halftime activities you're watching titan football on wcn testing why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance because he was a fun guy. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay. Let's go. 
Welcome back to Burry Stadium. I'm Tyler Helman. Alongside me, Scott Renegar. A thriller here at Burry Stadium. All tied up at 14. Scott, this game has been a back-and-forth shootout. Westminster were, of course, down 7-0. Answered, and then answered again to make it 14-7. Case Western came right back and tied it up. Absolutely, with that one big play down there. And, um, you know... Case Western is very adept at keeping their quarterback free and able to run around. We've had a couple of sacks and a couple of close ones, but they're, they're five interior people, and his quick feet and his ops being able to observe the field, look at the field while he's running, kind of reminds you of a guy that plays um, down in... Um, Pittsburgh. We have an interview right now with Matty Keenan, who's interviewing Joe Underko, the PAC commissioner. Matty? Uh, yes, I'm here right now with PAC commissioner Joe Underko. So, how do you manage all the different PAC activities um, that, like, in the area? Well, first, Matty, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. A great night for Westminster. Great night for football. You know, it's a challenge. You know, we've got uh, we're looking at 23 sports now in the PAC, and uh, uh, you know, with uh, 12 members, nine full and three. So, you know, between the two of us, myself and Kevin Fenstermacher, our uh, assistant commissioner, they keep us pretty busy. Um, so what part of your job do you find most difficult? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I would have to say probably dealing with discipline. Uh, you know, I, I always tell people that 90% of my job is great. You know, going to great games like this, wonderful atmospheres, and, and mostly seeing, you know, young people really improve themselves athletically, academically. You know, so those times when a, a player or a coach crosses the line and you have to deal with that, you know, that's not a lot of fun. But, but it's also, quite frankly, it's a part of maintaining and, and, and improving the culture that we build in this conference. And, and we're very proud of that. We're, we're a conference that takes academic and athletic success very seriously, but we also take conduct very seriously and so while nobody enjoys that you know it's like any other job there's going to be bad days and, and difficult things to deal with so what different events are coming up for the PAC well we are entering fall championship season and it's just around the bend here starting uh, next week we have our fall golf invitational over in Warren Ohio uh, the men are playing at Avalon Lakes and the women at Squaw Creek on Monday and Tuesday now that won't finish until the fall but uh, so that actually or until the spring excuse me but that gets our spring our, our championship run going and then after that once we get to the third week in October we really we really roll women's tennis down at WJ followed by cross country which we'll see you at down at Waynesburg uh, and then uh, volleyball and soccer, which, you know, if the season was to end today, it would probably be, at least volleyball would be right here. Um, so, you know, that that's exciting. And, and we're excited too, Maddie, because in addition to the conference championships we do every year, we're starting to gear up for some national championships we're going to be hosting. Uh, St. Vincent's going to be hosting the volleyball national championships this November. We've got golf and women's basketball coming up in the next three years. And honestly, Maddie, that's something we haven't done before. You know, we've never stepped out and hosted a standalone uh, national championship in PA territory so we're really excited about that now what sort of things go into hosting a national championship like that well we're about to find out because we haven't done it before <laughs> but uh, no I, I mean we, we put a bid in and it was accepted by the NCAA so you're dealing with budgets and you're dealing with you know locking in facilities and hotel rooms and things like that you know I'm fortunate I've, I've served on some NCAA committees so I've been involved in this process a little bit but I, I'm sure it's going to be different when we actually have that championship bearing down on us and, you know, we're, we're getting the facility ready and, you know, 40 teams or whatever are coming in for golf in a couple of years. Uh, it'll, it'll be exciting, but it'll, it'll be nerve-wracking too. All right, last question. So the Super Bowl is going to be coming up here in a couple of months. Who are, you, who are you rooting for this year? Well, as a Cleveland Browns fan, I haven't had to worry about the Super Bowl for a long, long time. Um, so how, how about this? Anybody but Baltimore or Pittsburgh? Is that, is that a Answer. Sounds good to me. No, don't say that way. I got all these ginsers surrounding me here, but uh, you know the Ohio guy and me sneaks out every once in a while. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us. Thanks, Maddie. It's nice to talk to you. Thank you. Back to you guys. Fantastic interview there with Joe Underko. We'll be back with Matty Keenan and Titan Weekly, as well as Troy Jackson, who had an Emmy nomination for his capstone. We'll be back with more of our halftime coverage. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Titan Weekly. I'm Maddie Keenan. The women's tennis team hosted Washington and Jefferson College on the 22nd, falling 6-3. 
Sarah Small had a win at the number five singles 6-4 and 6-1. At doubles, Small teamed up with Julia Cerbati for an 8-2 win at the number two spot. The women traveled to Penn State Barron, earning a win for the Titans 9-0. Alex Margazuka, Julia Cerbati, Casey Barton, and Allison Gitson all earned complete shutouts in singles. The men's golf team traveled to Mount Union and finished sixth with a team score of 623. Senior Connor White and junior Avery Andrick both tied for eighth. White and Andrick's second day scores were season best for the Titans. Andrick was also named the Student Athlete Advisory Committee Titan Athlete of the Week. On the 24th, the men hosted their fall invitational at the Newcastle Country Club. The Titans placed third overall. The women's golf team also competed in the Westminster Fall Invitational at the Newcastle Country Club, placing fourth. Junior Emily Marcus placed best for Westminster, shooting an 87 to earn fifth place. Sophomore Maria Huff placed next for the Titans, shooting a 92, earning ninth place. The next time we will see both the men and women tee off will be October 1st in their PAC championships. In volleyball news, the women continue to remain a force to be reckoned with. On Saturday the 22nd, the women faced off against W&J winning 3-2 and then again against Teal College winning 3-0. Delaney Saxton had 15 kills against W&J and 11 against Teal. The women then traveled to Greensburg to match up against Pitt Greensburg on the 25th. The ladies captured a win 3-1. Riley DeGeorge had 13 kills against the Bobcats. The men's soccer team had a matchup against Frostburg State on Tuesday the 25th. The men were tied 2-2 at the end of the match when Nick Iregu had the final goal in overtime, capturing the win for the Titans 3-2. Iregu's impressive performance thus far in the season also earned him the co-offensive PAC Player of the Week. The women's soccer team has had a very busy week. Thursday the 20th, the women earned a win against Pitt Bradford. Number 12, Kayla Trozzi had six shots on goal, sinking two into the back of the net. This earned her the PAC Offensive Player of the Week. On Monday the 24th, the ladies fell to Carnegie Mellon 4-0. First year, Regan Olson from Delaware, Ohio, had two shots on goal in an effort to keep the Titans in the game. Jocelyn Gilliatt also had a shot on goal for the Westminster Titans. Wednesday, the women traveled to Oberlin College. The women won 1-0 off of a free kick by senior Keely Beersick. For Titan Athletics Weekly, I'm Maddie Keenan on Coach's Corner. This documentary tracks down the facts when it comes to one of the most notorious ghost stories in the Newcastle area. I was thinking to go just along this edge, or do you want to go up? The film served as Jackson's capstone project at Westminster College. And I'm the producer for Ghost Witch. It is a documentary with the purpose to uncover the legends behind Mary Black and dive into her history to determine why people claimed her to be a witch. Winning this award, so thank you. We have the Mid-Atlantic chapter of the Emmys gave Jackson's production a nomination. These are the local Emmys, local TV stations, but the same academy as the big Hollywood Emmys. For best short form production from a college or university, it's the very first nomination for Jackson and the first from the Mid-Atlantic chapter for it's Westminster College. Go out and shoot. You can never have too much B-roll. You can never have too many ideas for your capstone because things change when you're filming. If you have one idea and you're set on it, you're going to be sadly mistaken. I'm sorry because like my capstone took a change as soon as I started filming. I found out new things that I didn't think because I researched online first and then I actually went out and did the interviews. and. What the experts had to say was much different from the internet. Jackson was part of the graduating class of 2018. He graduated with a degree in film and media production. So, These days, uh, he's living in Nashville, came out working as a videographer, helping produce music videos for notable Grammy winners like Gretchen Wilson. But Jackson's also a winner when it comes to his capstone project. Getting an Emmy nomination has its own prestige and notoriety. 
The 2018 Mid-Atlantic Regional Emmy Awards will take place on Saturday, October 13th in Philadelphia. We wish our Westminster alum, Troy Jackson, good luck on his nomination. As always, I'm Connor White with WCN 24-7. One Room in Westminster College's Memorial Fieldhouse got a special facelift this summer. The brand new State of the Art Student Lounge is now open to the nearly 450 student athletes on campus. Athletic Director Jim Daffler tells us a little bit more about the new space. For uh, several years, uh, this room in the Fieldhouse has been used as a hospitality room, uh, primarily for recruitment purposes and receptions and special events like that. We've always thought about having a place on in the field house where student athletes could uh, relax, hang out, study. And that's exactly what student athletes have been doing. You can find them studying, relaxing, or just enjoying the new air conditioned room. The student athlete lounge is a really cool place for me and my teammates to go so we can study and hang out here before it meets because it's really cool and air conditioned. It's also a great way for student athletes to collab on projects and get away from the bustle of the campus libraries. And then it gives athletes, I think, another place on campus to go besides maybe the library because it might be closer for them or it might be just more convenient for them to maybe stop by here before practice, sit here after practice because really your life revolves around this field house whenever you're in seasons. Any day of the week, you're almost guaranteed to find a student athlete hanging out or studying here in the new student lounge. In the field house, I'm Tori Zaba for WCN 24-7. Welcome back to Burry Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin alongside me, Scott Renninger. We are all tied up at 14 here at Burry Stadium. And Scott, we talked about wanting a shootout. This isn't necessarily a shootout, but it is a tie game. Both teams have been going back and forth in regards to packing punches. Well, I wouldn't. It's definitely not a shootout, but it's it's exciting. <laughs> um, it's wide open. Uh, of course, we knew coming in, Case Western is a passing team rather than running, and and the stats, statistics show that. Um, we, we've got to get that rush on their quarterback, but when you get rid of the ball as quickly as they do, that's very difficult. Drew Saxton is 10 for 15, 198 yards and two touchdowns. You talk about a passing team. They've fulfilled that. Whenever it comes to the run, they have had almost nothing. 31 yards rushing. And a lot of those were scrambles by the quarterback, Saxton. Whenever you look at Westminster, you're averaging over 80 yards right now, around 80 yards of rushing. Big disparity. Augustus DeCastro, 7 for 13. Only 39 yards whenever it comes to passing. Trying to get that big play, and actually Maddie Keenan, our sideline reporter, came up during our break, and she said that she talked to Benzel. We will get to her in the second half. However, she did tell us that Benzel wants the big play. He's happy that they're tied at 14, but Westminster is missing that big play besides the first score to tie it up, which was the 42-yard pass from Shimon Walker to Javon Hardy. Well, that was a wonderfully thrown ball by Shimon, and, and quite frankly, he is not noted for his passing ability, rather his running ability, which he's able to do. So, you know, that was, that was a big play, obviously, and then we come back to get another one as well. We'll be right back with more second-half action here at Bury Stadium. It's all tied up 14-14, Westminster and Case Western Reserve. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. Yes, sir.
Welcome back to Bury Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin. Alongside me, Scott Renegar. 14-14 Westminster and Case Western Reserve at halftime. And what a game it has been. Both teams going back and forth, delivering punch for punch. If you want to know how we got here, it, the scoring started out with a reception by running back Sam Jenkins for the Spartans. Resulted in an 81-yard uh, pass from Saxton to him. Made it 7-0. Then Westminster answered with a Javon Hardy 42 yard pass reception from Shimon Walker tied it up 7-7 Westminster actually took the lead by a Shimon Walker one-yard run up the middle, 14-7. to And then, with a minute left, Case Western Reserve drove down the field. A Justin Fan 18-yard pass reception from Drew Saxton tied it up. And Scott, about four minutes left until halftime ends. What adjustments do you think both teams need to make? Because we are tied up, and both teams, obviously, if you're tied up, made essentially the equal amount of mistakes. Inter interesting question. <clears throat> as far as I can um, perceive here, uh, I, I, I know I would be spending a lot of time with the uh, offensive line. We've done a pretty fair job of protecting. I, I think, and, and that has been kind of an Achilles of ours from time to time, but I, I think that um, we've been able to protect pretty effectively. We've got to maintain that. I would think perhaps we need to um, be very well, well aware of blitzing, perhaps a little more blitzing. From the Westminster standpoint, we've got to contain the quarterback. We've got to contain Jenkins, uh, Saxton rather. He, he just, he's very elusive and as a good quarterback and he, he keeps his eyes downfield as he's moving around. Example that one, one series where he made all 11 yards of the 10 yards by scrambling. He's very effective that way and is able to, and, and but at the same time, Tyler, he is keeping his eyes on his receivers and they're keeping their eyes on him moving. And it's not only difficult, it's virtually impossible, frankly, to um, be able to cover a moving receiver because he knows where he's going and he sees where they're, and I'm trying to follow him. And boy, is that a tough situation. Yeah, Westminster have blitzed, but both times they blitzed resulted in big plays. In fact, Westminster blitzed on the Justin Fan 18-yard pass reception. That left him wide open to tie up the game. And whenever they are blitzing, they get to Saxton, but Saxton's so slippery that they're not making the tackles. No, that's that's the <laughs> that's the game. That is the game, Tyler. Um, you know, we have to attack. They have to uh, protect both ways. Some local scores of interest right now. The Indians are up against the Royals 3-1 to one in the bottom of the third. Penn State currently has a 3-0 lead over Ohio State. UCF beat Pittsburgh 45-14 to in a shellacking. And the Cincinnati Reds took down the Pirates 3-0. Those are your local scores of college and professional sports. And Scott... We've always talked about, so far, the offense for Case Western. But you got to give Westminster credit. Uh, you know, going back and forth between Nicastro and Walker, something that they usually don't do unless it's a red zone situation or if Nicastro's hurt, like all of last week, all of the second half against Bethany. But so far, they've been utilizing both of them. Shimon actually has 10 runs for 24 yards. Hasn't had that big, big run. His biggest run in the quarterback position was nine yards. And eventually, if you are going to go back and forth with that dual threat, Benzel, of course, is hoping that that one run will break free. Well, certainly. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know that that's Shimon's forte is to... Um get the big run he looks and picks his spots but he just wants to make forward progress progress he wants to move the ball forward move the ball forward and now you know boy case western is out there and here comes the football we need to get our return out there and as we've said before and uh, when maddie was up here chatting with us a little earlier uh, first possessions of the second half 
see what kind of adjustments may have been made because they've had a chance to uh, talk to their spotters from upstairs and also uh, talk to their players. What's, what's going to happen now? Westminster deferred to start the game. They chose to receive or kick rather, so they will get the second half opening kickoff as the ball falls off the tee. <laughs> the second time it's done that and there's no there's no wind. Look at the flag down by the lake. It is laying still. <laughs> So now Westminster hopefully to receive the second half kickoff and the kick is successfully away. Fielded by Bryce Hill at the five yard line. Hill makes some moves, gets up to the up. 27. And with that, we'll take it down to the sideline now for an update. Maddie, what do you have for us? Yeah, Tyler, I was talking to Coach Benzel before he took his team into the locker room, and he was very happy with their performance thus far in the game, uh, being tied 14-14. However, he was looking to make a major play in the second half of this game. Thanks, Maddie. And we were talking about halftime. As we just said that Maddie was going to say that, they need the big play. And can the Titans do it on this drive starting at the 28-yard line? Nicastro is back into the game. Shimon not on the field. Here's a handoff to Tyler Green for about a one-yard gain. Just a straight handoff. Shimon trying to, or not, Bryce Hill trying to pick his hole inside, look to go outside and cut it back inside. That was a hard-earned two yards. Tyler Green, the third string running back, being utilized right now. Usually the dual threat is Keanu Grice, Bryce Hill, but Tyler Green taking some reps here on second and seven. Nicastro, pressure on the edge, tries to throw it up to Paulinelli, incomplete. Couldn't go up the ladder and make it. Fantastic coverage by Colin Schuster, the defensive back, all over Paulinelli, and it will bring up a quick third down. Definitely the coverage was uh, terrific by number six. He was he was right with with our receiver, with Bryce and Paulinelli, and Paulinelli did go up in that, but he was just covered. And we'll see if we can get it next time. A fan on the Spartan sideline up in the stands has a giant Case Western flag that they were just flying after that play. Third and seven of the 31-yard line. Quick throw to the right. Overthrowing his intended target by a got, lot. Got rushed. Got rushed, and that's about only about the second time we've seen number 44, who is a primary player in their defensive scheme, get in and rush. He just came right around our left side again and, and really forced um, the quarterback, um, Augustus, to not be able to touch the ball where he needed to be. Nick Henderson, the wide receiver, he was trying to get it to. Westminster They're coming. Punting deep in their own territory. And look at this Titan bounce all the way down to the 19-yard line. They were what a coming. Punt. They were coming after us. Well, we were spread in our normal punt formation, and they they had seven on the line of scrimmage, and they all came. Now some of them were holding up our cover people, but they were really coming that time. It's a good thing we got that ball off pretty quickly. Case now Western's this. offense immediately coming out very quickly. This will be interesting. This is their first. On our first possession, we went three and out. This is their first. What did they talk about at halftime? We knew what they talked about pretty much uh, defensively. What have they conjured up offensively? We'll see what they can do. Saxton calling a bunch of audibles right now in the shotgun. Puts Jenkins in the backfield with them. Quick throw and a catch. And a late, late hit. hit along the sideline of the 30-yard line. And, and Benz is after him, and it was a late one. That was Bryce Thomas, who had his first interception of the year last week. Number 22, defense, 15 yards, first down. That is a very costly because they had made some yardage on that, and now they're coming right back up, and now they're in at the 42-yard line, their own 42, but 
So it will be moved up from their own 19 all the way to the 42-yard line. And obviously moving the chains. That was the one thing we did pretty effectively the first half was not have penalties. And right there's a huge one, Tyler. Saxton in the shotgun. Give hands it off immediately to Jenkins, who tries to get a hole but can't. Stopped for a one yard gain. Nice finish to that uh, defense by Marvin Leoberste. Very nice pop as he was just starting to break up the hit field. That was a that was a good play. We hemmed him on. We hemmed him in, and Leoberste got there to finish the play. Saxton almost never under center again in the shotgun faces pressure and there he is being slippery taken down at the 47 yard line 49 is the official spot and he will be one yard away from a first down third and one we were talking about how he constantly evades defenders Westminster brings the blitz doesn't have a spy up the middle and he gets a big game and he just I don't know that that was the quarterback draw, but he came pretty quickly on that. We did have some pressure, and he just slips right underneath or right, right away from the pressure people. Big third and one at the Titan 49. Handoff, and Jenkins is going to get it. He got hit, but dragged his man just enough for a one-yard gain, and that will move the chains. Yeah, Paul Gonzalez made a good hit on him, but he was able just to slide just enough off and, and get the first down. Now they are in Westminster territory. Going no huddle, another handoff by Jenkins. Stopped for a three-yard gain, and that was Bill Medea linebacker who was able to stop him right there and that could have been a big game he oh my yes score 14 14 if you are just joining us Spartans trying to go down and score on their drive after Westminster started their second half drive with a three and out Westminster showing blitz. Lots of players at the line. And there it is, blitz along the edge. Saxton under pressure, gets away again, and the catch is made at the 27-yard line. That's what happens when, when we rush too hard off of the edge, and we keep saying the pressure is critical, and it is, but when we get beyond him, he slips in underneath and then keeps his eyes downfield, and we have to react. Joey Spitali on the reception, another handoff. This is not Jenkins taken down for a two-yard gain. That was Kyle Turkovovsky, backup running back. First time we've said his name in this game. And he is now in, in place of Sam Jenkins. And that was Medeja making the play. Second down, ball at the 26. Spartans trying to get up 21 to 14. Can they do it? Fake hand screen, off. screen throw. Good and reaction. Going nowhere now for I think he actually uh, got he's more. got yardage. Good reaction by Westminster, but he slid in underneath the play. Justin Fan able to get even more. Was going to be stopped for a two-yard gain. He was able to fight for about five to six and a big third down deep in Westminster territory, trying to hold the Spartans to a field goal. Ball at the 22. There they're balanced. Two two slots. One back fake. Quick throw to the right, catch made right at the marker, and that will Just a move quick the out. chains. Just a quick out. The inside receiver of those two twins over there just ran four or five yards downfield, sharp cut to the outside, un just beyond the sticks, underneath Luke, the coverage. Luke DeFrancesco made the play. I believe that was his first reception of the day. I believe. Here they are in their standard. Three wides to the field, one split to the... Split side. <laughs> K 
Case Western has converted so many third down the third downs this game. The Westminster D can't get off the field. Saxton steps up, fires a strike that is caught for the touchdown. Fan. Justin Fan makes the reception, and just like that, the Spartans take the lead 21 to 14. Absolutely shredded the Westminster D. They had no answers to that passing game this drive. No, and, and when we did have some pressure, quarterback Saxton slid underneath. Kick is up. Good. And the kick is good. So with 9.22 left in the second quarter, Westminster going to try to tie it up on their drive. We'll see what they can do. Down 21 to 14, you're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. Same time next week. Nice hill and a flag down. That came in from way back. Will that be another penalty on Westminster? Chop block. Below the waist. That ball will be spotted at the end of the run. 15 yard, half the distance to the goal. First half. Well, that's the second major penalty now. I mean, we had done so well that first half, and that's the second major penalty. We had one penalty, or we had three penalties the first half. And that is the fifth one of today. And that's a major, half the distance. In the third quarter, 9-17. I believe I accidentally said the second quarter. It is the third quarter of play with 9-17. Shimon Walker back into the game for Nicastro. Handoff up the middle goes nowhere. Hill stopped at the line. Yeah, no movement whatsoever there. They, they didn't buy the belly, and it was a give. They didn't buy the option run keep. Westminster trying to get a prime time win here at home. They have never beat the Spartans in the three times they have met. Trying to get their first victory here tonight in front of a packed crowd. Quick throw to the right to Hill. Hill spins his way to the 20 and Westminster really are not taking any shots. They took shots early. In fact, their first score was a 42-yard pass to Hardy, as we said. Ever since then, they're not taking any shots downfield. Well, there we, we took our running back out of the backfield, put him into motion, and then threw quickly to him, trying to get uh, Hill some space to run out there. But uh, Case Western is re reacting very, very quickly. And a quick third down. The last drive ended in a three and out for the Titans. Can they at least get a first down? Walker bobbles the snap under pressure. Going to run and take it himself. Gets stopped for a first, a first down. down. He, t he takes it himself. And actually, they're saying the ball is out. Case Western saying they recovered, but I think he was down. The officials aren't sure. They're talking. It's a first down. Boy. And the ball, Case Western still saying they have the ball. I think the ball came out after he hit the ground. That will move the chains. And Brett Carney uh, for Case Western right now is throwing his hands up wondering why didn't they get the ball as we will go to a replay quick to see if it was a fumble. Well, we're gonna get a snap here. 
Motion. We are not going to go to a replay. Walker, handoff. Oh, nice blocking that time. And Hill with a stiff arm. Gets ripped down for about an 11 yard gain. No, he's gonna be right at the marker. Will they move the chains? That's up to the 46 yard line, or 36, excuse me. That was a nice run. <clears throat> that time we had linemen coming out, lead blockers, and they did a very good job of blocking that play. And Bryce was right on them and going. <clears throat> And that will move the chains. And we're at the 36 yard line. Westminster trying to get momentum back into their favor. The Spartans fighting punch for punch. Here's a fake handoff. Walker keeps it himself up to the 40. Four yard gain. That time he put the ball into a Hill's belly and then followed him up through the hole. That I believe we are reading that, and he thought he could pull that ball out and then follow Hill, use Hill as a lead blocker and get up there. Good first down play. Anything over four yards is a good play. Westminster trying to get the big play. And a penalty. Move, probably movement, yep, yep. Illegal procedure. He remains second down. I don't think he called a number, did he? Couldn't hear the number, but that will set Westminster back. Westminster have been penalized heavily in this game. They have not been able to <coughs> well, that's calm three, down. That's on three this. this quarter. That is three this quarter. Two majors and, and a five-yarder there. Instead of second and six, now it's second and 11. And we have not overall been able to get yardage in big chunks. Three wide receivers to the right for Walker. And going to keep it up the middle, has a lot of room, gets to the sideline, ripped down for a solid gain to the 42. Boy, what a fine tackle though by that defensive back. Shimon was on his way and he just got stopped right on the spot. Yet again, another third down. Westminster five for 12 on third down efficiency, trying to make it six of 13. They have to answer. The Spartan offense is too high powered to have drives without at least three points. Walker. Throws down the sideline, oh and that was a very, very uh, long throw with no one in the vicinity. He was trying to hit Keanu, Keanu Bryce, Bryce, and I think that was just a misread on the route because Keanu actually stopped early, and with that, the drive will fall to a sputter, and the Titans are going to have to punt again. And it seems every single drive they have a fourth down, it results in an errant throw on third down. That's pretty much been the story as Porter Boy, just hit gets that the ball moment. off. What a boomer that's going to be fielded at the five-yard line. That is where the Spartans will start. And that was off of a bad snap. He scooped that up off the ground, got it away, didn't pay any attention. They did not come after that one like they did the other one. And it's a good thing because we were not, um, we, it took a little longer than what we'd like to. The Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra will be performing regularly this year at Westminster College. The inaugural season of the series will bring the internationally acclaimed orchestra conducted by renowned music director Manfred Honeck to Or Auditorium for two performances, October 6th and March 25th. Season subscriptions and individual tickets are available through the Celebrity Series office. For more information, call 724-946-7354. As we see the spark officially taking over deep at their own six. Westminster brings the blitz. Deep throw downfield, overthrowing everyone. Good coverage over there by Marvin Leberstein. Very good coverage. He was step for step with the receiver. <clears throat> We're not fooled on that, but, it, but you talk about trying to strike quickly. Boy, that was right now off of the, <laughs> out of their own seven yard line, Tyler to wind up and throw like that. Tried to go to Justin Fan, who has already had one touchdown reception today. And a couple other big ones on top of that one. Second and 10. 
Handoff up the middle to Jenkins. Great open field tackle. Had a big hole, but instead gets about a four to five yard gain. That was Paul Gonzalez, the ever dangerous middle linebacker for the Titans, scoping out the defensive line. And here's another third down. Case Western is 6 4 11 in third down efficiencies, but you wouldn't know it. You would think Case Western are converting all of their third downs. They have had almost every drive come to a third down and convert it. Can Westminster get their very rare third down stop? All out blitz. Saxton gets away. They couldn't contain him, and he is going to get a first, first down. down. Undisciplined through the middle of the field, came along the edge, and there was no one there. And you've seen Saxton this whole game do those runs over and over, and they still can't get, get him contained. And a no huddle. Well, they haven't used a huddle yet. <laughs> I know I can't do that. Game. You should be able to. Jenkins in the backfield. Quick handoff to him. Pushes the pile for a five yard gain. And Case Western running the clock right now. Only 3.47 left in the third quarter of play. Here they go quick. Saxton, quick handoff to Jenkins. Jenkins stopped and it will bring up another third down at the 29. Can Westminster get a stop here? Again going no huddle, very quick to the line, third and two, quick screen, missed deflection, and it's caught by Fan down the sideline to the 39. Had a man in his face, and this defense has no answers for the Spartans. They're moving very, very quickly, and that's a unbelievable understatement but they're going they have their plays called way ahead of time quick There's throw a, and a good reaction there but tackled for a two yard loss Westminster finally getting a tackle for a loss after that I quick think, screen I think that might have been to Morgan Colton Morgan who has been a prominent um, part of their attack and a Westminster player just got off the field False start. It's actually on the Spartans. I was going to say, I didn't think that would be an illegal substitution considering that was uh, James Leon who actually jumped out of bounds to, to get there in time. And it was worth it as he just made it to the white line. Now that, that's the, um, I think that's the first penalty you see him, or Case Western CWU has had this half. It is, they only had one penalty before. This team is very disciplined and they're showing it right here. Second and 16, ball at the 33. Titans trying to get the ball back on the offensive side. Quick throw, wide open to the 40 yard line. Good stop, but <clears throat> there they, the inside receiver ran off. The outside receiver started to run off like he was gonna run a fly route and then darted inside. Joey Spitali made the reception. So now on a third and eight, the longest third down in a while for Case Western. If Westminster are gonna get a stop, it has to be here. The Spartans are shredding the defense. Benzel getting the crowd fired up. Westminster on an all out blitz. Throw down the sideline, diving attempt incomplete. Well, that was, a, that was a good fake. We faked the all-out blitz, and then we dropped back to give some underneath coverage, and we stayed with the receiver out there step for step. Luke DeFranesco, the intended target, just over his fingertips, and even on the throws that are overthrown by Saxton. <laughs> it was Most close. of the time, the receivers are open and could make the catch. Westminster finally getting a lucky break so this defense can rest. High snap, a penalty, and a low line drive takes a Spartan bounce all the way down to the 27. We'll see what the flag is. I'm guessing we may at the 26 illegal but procedure a flag on the play. I'm thinking they may not have had seven people on the line of scrimmage. 
and Ben's, they gave Ben's the choice. This is something that they've just, we, that's just has been enacted in the uh, rules. Illegal formation you can on the kicking team. Five men in the back backfield. That penalty would be five yards at the end of the run. First down. B, you could get five yards and force him to punt again, but now they've added to that. Or you can take the five yards at the end of the play, which Westminster did. There would be no need. That was a short punt. No need to uh, take the uh, penalty at, and force them to punt again. And they didn't have enough players on the line of scrimmage. Titans getting the ball back with a minute 35 left until the fourth quarter. Nicastro back in the game. Fake handoff, quick throw to Connor Cox. Good block out there by Paulinelli. Cox weaving his way for a six-yard gain, five-yard gain. That was a good play. Bryson had a nice block out there. That time we did what they've been doing and throwing underneath the coverage and using one of, the, one of our wideouts as a blocker. And something we didn't point out today, actually, Westminster wearing their throwback helmets, white helmets. I believe that was a decision due to Case Western's helmets being so similar to the usual navy blue of the Titans. Here's Bryce Hill moving Boy, the pile nice for a first run. down. And he's actually marked right at the line. Nice run. He really earned those yards. I don't think they're moving the sticks. And they're not moving the sticks. Should be a third and one. Third, this is third and inches. This is as close as you can get. And oh, wow. Walker, Walker is in the ball game. And the spot is, okay, it is. It is right at the line. Thought it was going to be over a yard. And a timeout. No, I think the down marker may be wrong. It should be third down. They had second up there, and the umpire saw that, and so it's third and one. That's why they stopped the play. So on third and inches, Shimon still not under center. Going to keep it himself, though, gets Powers the first it. down. Powers it. He did not go under the center. He stayed in the shotgun. But there was no fooling around. He got straight up the field, got those shoulders north and south, and powered his way through. And That'll that is going to be it for the end of the third quarter of play. You wanted a good game? The product on the field is giving it to you. Case Western up 21 to 14, but the Titans driving, trying to answer to tie it up. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. And Welcome back to Bury Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin alongside me, Scott Renniger, as we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Westminster has possession, down 21 to 14 to the Tartans. Benzel on the sidelines talking to his players. This is a drive that needs seven points. You're having momentum swinging your way, but then again, if you give the ball back to Saxton and that offense, can the defense even stop them? Last drive, so many third down conversions. Uh, just and just getting lucky with a barely overthrown pass along the sidelines to make it fourth down. Well, that's the way games are won. Third down conversions. You just cited that, and that's the way games are won. Now it's a first down here. The Castro's back in the game. Hand off to Grice twist. and a throwback caught by Nicastro who throws downfield to a wide open Paulinelli who makes the catch along the sideline. Uh oh. And two flags on the play. Westminster fired up, but this could be coming back. Looks like the ineligible downfield was the first signal I saw from one of them, one of the officials. And it looks like they're but that trying to check if Nicastro that, that threw ball, it. But that ball happened behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, passes, by rule, second forward pass is illegal. Illegal forward pass. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That carries a loss of down. 
look at that because if that was a forward pass on the first throw by Grice to Nicastro, that would be a penalty. Can we see if it was a backwards pass? Well, that certainly changes the picture from the spot of the foul, five yards. So now it is second, and it looks like 20. And that is a loss of downs to go along with that ball. Go along with it. At the 32. Have to get to the 47 of the Spartans for a first down. Nicastro, plenty of time, throws, overthrows oh. Polinelli. Almost picked off. Dangerous Rangers throw. Pass to Grayson Polinelli is Colin incomplete. Colin Schuster with the deflection. So a third and long, and after a promising drive down to Case Western Territory, can Westminster pull off a third down miracle? Quick throw to Javon Hardy. Hardy going to be wrapped up along the sidelines to the 39. They're going to have to give the ball back to the Spartan offense. That was, a, that was an attempt at the bubble screen, and Case Western refused to be fooled by that, Tyler. We, we tried to get the ball to Javon, probably the fastest man on the field on both teams, and just no space for him to operate. Kick fielded at the 26, a very, very late fair catch there by Justin Fan. That was that was good we laid off of him because that was that was a very late signal. This broadcast is brought to you in part by the Broadcasting and Media Production Program at Westminster College, providing real-world ex experience in today's media for tomorrow's producers. We are very proud of our students and the work of our talented alumni who are working all across the country for the likes of NBC, Fox, CBS, ABC, and ESPN. See what they have been up to at wcproud.com. That's wcproud.com. With 13 minutes left, Westminster's D, if you want to stay in this game, cannot give up any points on this drive and have to make something out of the offense. Here's a handoff. Jenkins with a 12-yard run, not how they want to start. That is actually not Jenkins. That was Zach Hall in for Jenkins. And look how quickly they're ready to go. Handoff up the middle to Hall again, and Hall breaks another run to the 47. This is the pressure they've been putting on us. They, they dominated the third quarter, and this is the pressure they've come up with, and look how quickly they're ready to go here. Down in the three-point stance, the linemen are. Saxton, There's the quick screen. screen. Chop block. Tremendous block out there on 22. Up to the 40-yard line. And the crowd, you can hear them, they are very upset with the play of this Westminster D. Usually it's the D that keeps them in the game, but Case Western driving now, and if you go down by two touchdowns, you don't want to be too down on the Titans, but with 13 minutes left, it would be very hard to come back with the way the offense has been performing so far in the second half. Hand off to Hall. Hall stopped at the line. It's going to be third and two to three. You know, I don't. I don't know that I would be so hard on the um, Westminster defense not not playing well as much as Carter, um, Case Western is putting pressure on us, uh, Tyler, and and they are playing excellent football right now. Their offense, they are so quick, and they go with. No huddle. They third haven't had three. a huddle all game. Ball at the 40-yard line. Another third down. Can they get a stop and get the ball back? They're in double twins. Saxton, under pressure, throws, Pick. picked up! It's picked up! Huge play. At the 30-yard line. Marvin Liberiste snags it. And just as we were talking about the defense needing a stop, they were getting shredded. Liberiste snatches the ball away, and Westminster 
getting a huge break. Can the offense use that, though? With good field position. With good field position. Now, Ty, we're going to be at the 32-yard 30, line. Lieber Easte couldn't stay on his feet. Traveled almost crawling for 32 yards, or not 32, up to the 32-yard line. Was able to get a five-yard gain on the return. That was not an ill throw. That was a very good throw, and Marvin just made a great play on it. So now, fake handoff. Throw to a wide open Polinelli. Can he make something out of it? Just ducks out of bounds. He's out of bounds, and that may be very good right now. Let's don't let that clock run. It's going to be, that was only a three yard gain. Ball being just a little high. And good reaction by the defense out there. We're blocking them wide. We just can't sustain it. They're and look at this, Nicastro is under center. Hands it off to Grice. Grice with a power run. About a four to five yard gain. It will bring up third down, third and three. I think the purpose of that is just to change the look a little bit. As you, you were surprised to see him under center, I'm sure that's part of the plan with that. Try to keep them just off a little bit. Show them something new, show them something different. We've been under center a couple times, but that's not our forte. Case Western, eight for 15 on third down efficiency. Westminster, six for 15. Third and three. Nicastro saw something out Nicastro, there. Nicastro, quick throw, overthrows Polinelli, and that will bring up fourth down. He's high on that throw, and he got hit, and he's down. Somebody's down. It's not Nicastro. Not sure who is down on the one field. Of the, one of the offensive linemen, I believe. And Westminster already without two of their linemen coming into this game. We'll take a quick break. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Stadium, I'm Tyler Helvin. Alongside me, Scott Reniger. Nick Lampandarios, the center for Westminster, hurt on that last play able to walk off on his own power. It's fourth and three. Marvin Liberiste picked off Saxton. Westminster couldn't do anything with their drive and with 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter, not gonna get too many more chances here. I think that was the right Low guard. Low snap, kick is off. That's gonna hit and bounce. Rolls all the way to the 22 yard line. And that is where the Spartans will start their drive. WCN247.com is updated and maintained by the digital newsroom for Westminster Cable, the Hulkad, and Titan Radio at Westminster College. This student-operated service covers your campus and community. Westminster had a rare stop last drive after Liberiste picked off Saxton. What will the Spartans do on their drive up 21 to 14 with 11.03 left to play? Quick throw, complete to the 29 yard line. Those little stop routes are devastating. It's, it's just like an excellent run, excellently blocked run. Just sprint down the field five, six yards, stop on a dime, turn, and that ball's on its way. Luke DiFranesco made the catch, second and three. Case Western, very talented with these quick passes. Have not taken many shots, but then again, you don't have to with the way the run game is coming to life as well. There's there a blitz is. and taken down right at the marker. I believe they're going to move it. And 
And it's going to be a first down. They are going to move the chains. And this defense getting very tired. Well, Case, Case keeps the pressure on them the entire time. Spartans have definitely had more time of possession by far in this game. 9.57 left. Give. Hand off to Hall. Hall Good gets stopped there. at the line. <clears throat> yeah, they, especially this quarter, the third quarter, they dominated time of possession. Westminster actually had more possession in the first half, 23 minutes to 21 minutes, but that has completely gone lopsided here in the second half. Tale of two halves for sure. Second and 10, crowd getting into it. Saxton, quick throw and catch. There's the throw under, you see on their sideline, there went the streak, and then cutting out, that's an out pattern, well underneath the streak, clearing the space, and then shooting that dart out there into the sideline. Their hope is that they can break one tackle because it's a one-on-one -on -one situation tie, and they're able to get pressure out, or get that out of there. And we had said that Westminster's offense stalled in the second half of Bethany. That is exactly what's happening here. 14 points in the first half, nothing in the second half. Can the offense get the ball back here on a crucial third down? Okay, they saw us fake a blitz that time. Now whether we'll come back in or not, yes we are. Saxton, plenty of Look time to time. throw, all day to throw. Throws to a wide open receiver, caught at the 47 yard First line, down. Joey Spitali. And see there are all those offensive linemen, nobody broke down field, they just stayed with their assignments, stayed inside and kept picking up blue shirts. And we couldn't get through. Crowd very unhappy and you know, Honestly, who can blame them in that regard with, with all that time to throw, no one around Saxton. Eventually someone is going to get free, and that has been the story. It's how the, uh, tar or the Spartans rather had their first touchdown today to Sam Jenkins. They're, they're in their uh, double slot that time. Hand off the hall, two <coughs> yard gain. 7.54, last week Westminster had a pick six in the fourth quarter. And who knows, if your Westminster, if your offense isn't doing anything for you, try to score on defense. What do you think, Scott? Well, you gotta keep working, you gotta keep working. It's, you know, as we said earlier, it's a 60 minute ball game, Tyler, and you, you gotta keep working. You know, I know the defense has been on the field an extraordinary amount of time uh, this second half, but you've got to keep working. That's why we condition, that's why we lift. You've got to keep the faith, keep, keep the concentration. Crowd into it again. Oh, and a jump off the edge. Oh, a timeout, timeout a timeout yeah. called by Case Western, and right as the snap went off, that is why the crowd is so angry. Saxton was going to be sacked immediately on a blitz off the edge, but a timeout results in the crowd livid right now. And you can hear them. I think you can actually hear them through our headsets up here in the booth. Pennsylvania needs qualified sports officials for all sorts check, of check. sports. Without officials, we'd all have a lot less to cheer about. Make the call, go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process to be a referee yourself. Case Western call timeout prior to the play clock. The play clock was running down, that's what happened. And that they just got the timeout. I think it came in from the sideline probably. Crowd very unhappy, and they're they're supporting the defense though. They're saying you know all these all these penalties or timeouts, and the crowd's not liking them. And defense, can they step up? It is the question. They've been on the field a long time. They're exhausted. And of course, you need the offense to try to tie it up here late in the fourth quarter. 7-16. Can the D get a stop, or will Case Western break away? 
Second and nine. Saxton, plenty of time. Quick throw and a catch. We've got a flag. All the way to the 31-yard line, but there is a flag. That was Colt Morgan on the reception. It came from the umpire, so I'm guessing it's going to be a hold. <laughs> and it's on I'm Westminster. Wrong. Hands to the face, and that may be on top of the play. Wrong guess on my part, Ty. Crowd right now in shock at what is occurring. Yeah, it's at the end of the play. Inside the 30. And look how no, far outside. this ball is well, being moved well, all the way to the 19-yard line of the Titans. 15 yards at the end of the play. And we were outside the 30-yard line, so it was the full 15. Moves the ball to what, the 18? It is. It is officially at the 19-yard line. 18. It is 18. First and 10. Defense exhausted. Saxton trying to put him up 28 to 14 and seal it. Quick throw, wide open receiver has and been the theme, and he the is slipping tackles down to the three yard line. Justin Fan, no one within 10 yards of him. He is not a big player, but boy, is he slick. Officially out at the four. It's not looking good for the Titans here late in the fourth quarter. Going to have to rely on a potential interception in the end zone or punching the ball out. Kyle Tervofsky, the running back in. Here's a handoff to him, breaks a tackle, gets stopped at the line. Good defensive play that time. You were talking about what we need to do, and that's, you know, but be alert now to Saxton doing something. The give didn't work that time. Saxton has escaped so much pressure. Westminster has only sacked him once this entire game. Saxton, There's your back throw. throw. Fade to the corner of the end zone, overthrows his receiver, and that will bring up third down. But you see where that ball was, what they call the outside shoulder. It was either going to make be a um, terrific catch or incomplete as happened. Adam Zybko, the tight end, again, broke free from his man, but an overthrow gives Westminster another chance to potentially hold Case Western to three points. And be alert out here to 86. Colton Morgan, he's the lone receiver into the sideline. Saxton back to pass, pump fake, there and is. there goes Morgan up top, and that's the touchdown. You were just saying that we're gonna go to him? And with the height he has, why not? It's a definite uh, size mismatch. There's no question. And you, you can't fault the defensive back. It's just he's too big into the end zone like that. So now this to make it a two-score game with only 525 left. Rush along the edge, kick is up, and the kick is good. We're getting a good rush, it's just that <laughs> that's how quick they are. The broadcasting and media production program at Westminster College has earned national recognition for having an impressive social media presence. See what the buzz is all about? Go to WCN247.com and follow our links for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And again, with about 525 left in this game, Westminster down two touchdowns. Benzel, actually, you can see him on the sideline here talking to the ref. He is not liking any of these calls. He's giving him a piece of his mind. And 
you figure there's a lot of things that could have gone Westminster's way had it been uh, without the mistakes. An example was the throwback from Keanu Grice to Augustus De Castro, who threw it downfield to Paulinelli. That throw was all the way down to the 24-yard line. Westminster could have tied it up there. That was their one shot, and ever since then, they haven't been able to do anything with the chances that they've been given. Marvin Libariste had an interception, couldn't do anything with it either. Can they make it a one-score game as the ball rolls into the end zone for a touchback? Javon that's, Hardy. That's going to come out to the 25. Well, they forced us into a, almost a sheer throwing game now. Might sneak a run in here or there, but it's almost going to be a sheer throwing game. And they've been pretty adept at not allowing our receivers too much space to work in. Offense giving the defense a break. Going to have to score quick with 5.25 left. If you want to have time to try to have two touchdowns in the last five minutes of the game. Down 28 to 14. Nicastro in the game. Rolls right. Quick throw. Catch to Connor Cox, who gets Out hit bounds. along the sideline. Out of bounds. That's a good play. For a nine yard game. Out of bounds. Stop that clock. Chains are moving, but I believe the young man that got uh, shaken up, number 50, Lamadarius, is back into the game in his right guard spot. Well, here they come. Oh, boy. Nicastro pump fakes. Gets it away to Javon. Overthrows him. He was wide open, but Nicastro had men in his face. Couldn't boy, see him. Boy, did he ever. They were coming. They came off of that uh, our right side, off of their left side and had two extra people coming, six and nine. It'll bring up second down. Nicastro, back to pass, pocket collapsing, quick throw to Keanu. Not for a first down, game. but going to be third and three. Now at this point, down two scores, I'm thinking we need to get positive yardage here. If we don't get that first down, this may be four down territory. Oh, this, this is certainly point. four down territory. With 440 left, down two touchdowns, I don't think you're gonna get another chance in this game. Blitz. Fake handoff, quick throw, wide open receiver all the way to the 47 yard line. And out of bounds, on top of the first down, out of bounds. That was a good job by Nicastro because they had pressure coming. Anthony Lavati with his reception to move the chains. First time we've said his name today, I believe, on a big reception, third down conversion. Nicastro, quick throw, catch to Grice. Grice gets pushed back. And, and they're going to keep him people. in bounds, too. He was trying to get to that sideline. All the way up to the 44-yard line, going up tempo. Clock still winding, 3.52 left. Don't want to have too much time run off the clock if you're the Titans. Case Western's loving this. Nicastro back to pass. Plenty of time, quick strike, and it's a tip oh and boy. almost intercepted. Yep. Javon, that could have been the game right there, dropped an open pass. You know, he took a pretty pretty good whack that time too. That was that was a little under route. Third and six. Nicastro puts Cox in motion to the left after being in the backfield. Pressure. Quick throw. Grice gets the first down and more. Still on his feet. All the way for a 12-yard gain. Tried to break away. Clock still running. 3.30. Three 
Three wide receivers to the left for Nicastro. Getting something going on this drive. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket, gets it away and throws it away. And intentional grounding has just been called. There was no receiver. Quarterback was not outside the pocket. Ball be placed, spot a foul. Ball for far too long and couldn't escape the. Well, he was trying to read while, while significant pressure was coming. And we just couldn't, you know, they're, they're covering us, as they would say, like a blanket right now. You have 46 yards to go to tie it up with three minutes left. It will take a miracle for them to stop Case Western, get the ball back with more than a minute to play. Nicastro, quick throw. Down the sideline, overthrown. See, he's throwing into double coverage because he has to, and they're just dropping back, and they're still able to collapse that pocket a little bit up front. Joey Joy, a receiver across the middle of the field, thought the ball was going to be thrown to him, but they took the shot down the sideline. A third and very long, third and 21 at the 46 of the Spartans. Three wide receivers to the left. Nicastro back to pass. Throw down the sideline to Connor Cox. Cox gets out, out of, of bounds. bounds to the 35. Makes it a fourth and 10 exactly. Fourth and 11, marking it at the 36. So here's the game right here, clock 2.52. If Westminster does not convert, Case Western can run the clock out and win 28 to 14. Last gasp for the Titans. Blitz. Nicastro, quick throw, caught by Cox, down to the nine yard line. Huge conversion. Off of a blitz too. Oh, and he's hurt, he's hobbling right now. He got his legs taken out. But we have a penalty too, roughing personal foul. Roughing the passer, I believe it was. So that's gonna take it half the distance, so the ball is going to be at what the five yard line, Ty. And that you were just saying, you know, gotta have the big play, and they had the big play, 231. So if you do manage to get in here, if you stop Case Western on three downs, it will give you enough time. But if Case Western gets one first down on their next drive, Barring a score, Westminster still has the score here. Quick throw, picked off, it's picked off, and that's going to end it. Returning it all the way to the 35 yard line. And just like that, hope is dashed. Well, that was, they're dropping a lot of people back in there and he's trying to hang in. And after throwing for a long time, they choose to pass at the five yard line. And it, they will pay for it dearly. 2.06 left, Case Western will potentially win 28 to 14. Case Western coming in clutch. Biggest interception of the game. Timeout called by Case Western. We'll take a quick break and be right back with 2.06 left. Case Western, barring a miracle, going to win 28 to 14 over the Titans. You're watching your home of the Titans, WCN. <laughs> the 
doesn't necessarily mean they won't throw those little short ones. Welcome back to Bury Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin alongside me, Scott Renninger, is this game about to be wrapped up. Case Western up 28 to 14. Just had before the break a huge interception. <laughs> Nick Castro drove his team down, Westminster down to the five yard line, throws an interception in the end zone. That's returned all the way to the 40 yard line. And Case Western dominant performance right now as another timeout is called this one by Westminster. It's funny, whenever you think about what went wrong, you say what went wrong for this game? Penalties and missed opportunities on the offense, defense on the field far too long. Well, I would say <clears throat> there were a couple significant penalties and that is on us. That is on Westminster. Uh, two big 15 yarders to start off the second half. And that changed field position, changed momentum a little bit, and, and gave Case the, the opportunity to get free yardage. Um, you know, that. And, and also, I think, Tyler, we have to credit Case Western Reserve, too. They have played a very, very strong game. And there's the give. Give to Jenkins. Jenkins with a first down and more down the sideline to the 17-yard line. And this crowd absolutely heartbroken after getting hope offense finally oh, get finally getting it going throw an interception for a touchback or not for a touchback it was thrown into the end zone returned all the way for a, about a 50 to 60 yard return yeah and it, and it took a superb effort to keep him from going the length of the field that would have been a hundred and some yards from where he picked off the pass ball at the 19 yard line Saxton in the shotgun again Timeout called by Case Western again. Quite a lot of timeouts called in the past uh, 30 seconds of play, Scooter. Well, I, <coughs> their coordinator came out. I don't know whether it's coordinator or the uh, head coach uh, came out, and he, he was a little bit frustrated with that. Um, I'm not sure what happened uh, on their call. Of course, they don't huddle, and they're calling plays in from the sideline, but they're being called down from up top. Um, they just weren't sure of what was coming down or going in. They're using a tight end now, tight end to the short side of the field with only twins to the right. This is a very tight formation, and you can see where they are. Now, they have played almost foot to foot. That, that's their style the whole game, and, and it's just so hard to get by them. Jenkins Rush. outside on the edge. Ball pops out, but he's down. I believe a helmet came off. That is a helmet. That's not the ball. That was a helmet that rolled out of bounds. So, so, so he'll have to come out of the game, which is really not important. And they'll just put the next man up in. So Case We Western. took another timeout. So timeout by Westminster. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it here. So going into next game, you know, Westminster will be 3-2. and two. Heartbreaking loss today. You know, lost to Wittenberg, lost to Case Western. Two teams that they lost to last year. You know, the three teams they lost to, combined record of 30-0, and zero, they didn't even lose a game. So whenever you look at this game, though, I feel like Benzel will be more upset because of just the opportunities that happened. Like, all the moments where Westminster were going to break through, the throw to Paulinelli that was going to tie the game that was a, a penalty, and then they had to punt. Marvin Liberiste's interception to swing the game. Offense couldn't do anything. Just so many aspects, and of course, the last interception in the end zone that would have given Westminster a chance. Well, that would have made it, you know, guessing 28-21. Uh, the onside kick, and of course you never know, they'd have had the hands team in for sure. Um, oh my. And touchdown Case Western, handoff up the middle, and that will simply pad the score and make it look like a larger margin than it really was, than it really is. Um, you know, and that's that's an unfortunate 
score that time. It, it makes it look like they came in and perhaps um, beat us significantly. Uh, the one thing they did do, though, uh, Tyler, and, and you've kind of alluded to this, is they have dominated the second half. Score was 14-14 at the second half. And there's the kick. It's good. 35-14, to just like last week with Bethany. No offensive touchdowns in the entire second half. Completely stalled out. Well, and we don't have the uh, statistics with us yet, but I think, and you've also mentioned this uh, several times, our um, time of possession, we have not had the ball significantly uh, in the second half. And, of course, you, you know, what we talked about earlier, if I have the ball, you can't score. Well, <laughs> put that on the other side, Case Western, we have the ball, you can't score. And Westminster will have no break next week as they head to Grove City, who's an upstart team right now. Pulled off an upset against Carnegie Mellon today, 31 to 21. Grove City, you know, a surprise team this year. And who knows? Westminster could be three and three, you know, by the time that happens next week. But obviously, you want to move to four and two right now today, moving to three and two. But taking it one game at a time. Fielded to the six-yard line by Hill. Hill with a burst of speed all the way. And a little shake and bake along the 46, with that. 46, 47, and it's all for now with a minute 24. Gives the crowd something to cheer about, but down by three touchdowns, barring a touchdown and an onside kick, a touchdown, an onside kick, and a touchdown <laughs> uh, in a minute and 24. Don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's just... You have to be able to control the ball when, when you have it, and not only control it, but do something with it. And, and I notice Shaman Walker is in the game now. Shaman in the game for the Titans, going to take it himself. A huge stiff arm up to the 43 yard line. The Titans still fighting. Well, there's no give up with this, with this team. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's disheartening. It, it's it's uh, you you work so hard, you play so hard, and and things don't go. But then you have to make your things go too. And that's going to keep the clock running. First down. We'll stop the clock there for a moment before we wind it again. The 42nd clock's already moving. And that was Nick Henderson who made the reception. 51 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Case Western up 35 to 14. Westminster just honestly trying to make the score look a little bit better here as Shimon scrambles all the way to the 32. That'll <laughs> <laughs> make it a, a second and four. Case Western today had 22 first downs. Really showed how many first downs they had. So many dink and dunk plays that kept the defense on the field for well, the Titans. Well, that's, that's their style. That's and their the style. ball is picked off again by Case Western and intended target to Bryson Polinelli. With 31 seconds left, that will most certainly do well, it. It's, you know, th this has been, unfortunately, a lost cause for about the last uh, seven, eight minutes. And, you know, it's just, um, I think, big, big situations. Carnegie Mellon, on their first possession of the second half, moved right down the field, aided by a couple of significant penalties on Westminster, two 15-yarders, and that just um, opened up, kind of opened up the floodgates a little bit. Um, they're just the type of team that you cannot make mistakes against. Um, Had to play perfectly today. Did not play perfectly for sure. A valiant effort. No touchdowns in the second half as Westminster falls 35-14. The final score again, 
Case Western 35, Titans 14. We'll be back with our post-game wrap-up on the home of the Titans, WCM. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cows go on vacation? New York. <laughs> I don't know. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to Burry Stadium. I'm Tyler Helvin. Alongside me, Scott Renniger. Maddie Keenan, our sideline reporter down there, has an interview with Westminster head coach Scott Benzel. Now, Coach, I know you haven't gotten a chance to watch the reels yet. Um, there were a lot of big plays tonight. What do you think might have been the turning point in the game? Uh, Westminster was tied 14-14 at the half. What do you think was the turning point? They made plays. This is exactly what she said. In pivotal points, they made plays. We didn't. And that's Tough games like that, tight games, you have to make plays. So, unfortunately, we didn't do it, and, you know, we got to figure it out and, and, and fix it. Now, um, did Case Western's no huddles create problems for uh, Westminster's defense tonight? Not really. Um, I thought we handled it fine. It's just, you know, their, their shot plays when they made them, and then we, uh, we couldn't answer in terms of the other side of the ball, and that's, that's what happens. You know, we just got to – I didn't think the hurry up affected us at all, to be honest with you. Now, moving forward for next week's game against Grove City, uh, what's going to be your message whoa, to your team whoa, to sort of whoa. pick them up and keep yeah. them going? Yeah, it's adversity. You know, it's, it happens. You have, yeah, to, you have to not feel sorry for yourself, get better, and go out and win. They're not going to hand it to you. you got to go earn it. So that's the message. All right. Thank you, Coach, so much. Brandon Nolan. Tyler. Up into the booth for our post-game wrap-up. Valiant effort by Westminster, but obviously a more valiant effort by the Spartans, dominating 35 to 14 in the second half of play. Again, it was 14 to 14 at halftime before Case Western broke away. Westminster's offense had no answers. Well, I, I exactly. I, I think as we, we mentioned a little bit earlier, those two big 15-yard penalties on. Case's first possession of the second half were significant. And, you know, what the coach said is, is so true. They made plays, we didn't. They made more plays than we did, and we couldn't respond. No fault to anybody, but that's what you have to do in a ball game, is just simply make plays, offensively and defensively. As we said earlier, Ty, in, 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 the, in the preliminary, before the ball game, if I have the ball, you can't score. They did not give us the ball. Now, we aided them a couple times, and not to be repetitive, but with penalty, but then their, their quick passing game is like running, running the football. It keeps that clock moving. It keeps those chains moving. They had the one really big play, third play of the game. Okay, get past that. The rest of it is just little bings here, little dings there, and, and keep the ball moving and the chains moving. They did have a lot of dink and dunk plays. Again, we said it earlier, 22 first downs as we take a look at the stats. Uh, Westminster were two for two on fourth down efficiency but couldn't make really anything of it. Uh, Westminster, believe it or not, this is gonna sound insane, they had possession for 30 minutes, Case Western 29. But of course, that was all in the first half of play. Westminster barely had the ball in the second half. And penalties killed them. Nine penalties for <coughs> 90 yards for the Titans. You just said it. <laughs> you just stated it. Nine penalties. And the guys, what, what um, Coach Benzel said, we've got to figure it out. We've got to correct it. Now, the character of this football team has got to come to the forefront now. The coaches will figure it out starting tomorrow. In fact, they may watch the tape tonight probably. Have 
not a very pleasant sleep tonight, actually, because when you pour your heart into something, you, you, you want to make things happen. The kids feel the same way. We came in ready to play. We played okay the first quarter, played very well the second quarter. But as we said also, it's a 60-minute contest. It is. And you've got to maintain. And there's no break for Westminster as they will be taking on Grove City at Grove City next week. Grove City coming off of a win. And Case Western traveling to W&J who just barely beat Bethany today. That was a 27-20 decision. Well, that, <clears throat> that could be looking past <laughs> that could be looking past this ball game a little bit. W&J looking to next week. Case Western coming in. Um, of course, W&J hoping that Case Western won because that would embellish W&J's victory next week if that would be the case. But, I you know, I, I think I'm Right now, I want to issue a little bit, along with the coaches, um, coaching staff, a little challenge to the kids because they're going to watch our broadcast and that. What are you going to do? We're two and two. What are you going to do? I should say three and two, I think. But what are you going to do? Grove City is not going to fall down. That is a rivalry 15 miles that way. They pulled off a big win today, CMU. All right, Titans, can we cinch up the strap? We showed a lot of character coming back in the Wittenberg game against a very good team. Didn't win it, but showed a lot of character. Now, we just had a big letdown today. What are we going to do about it? We'll see if Westminster can bounce back next week. The final score again, 35-14 to 14 in favor of the Spartans. This broadcast was brought to you by the Broadcasting and Media Production Program at Westminster College, providing real-world experience in today's media for tomorrow's producers. Also, thanks to my partner, Scott Renniger, and our sideline reporter, Maddie Keenan, our entire crew. And most of all, we'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Helvin saying so long from your home of the Titans, W. UCN. Have a fantastic night.